good with the two cars. Oh. Best possible place. Ooh, I hear microphone. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, man. Hey, Winston Cup racing hero, what's a one-word description for Bristol? Wild. Uncontrollable. A hail hole. Treacherous. Mm. Fast. Intense. I couldn't play it on my <laughs> Behold the source of the driver's love-hate relationship, the Tennessee Mountain Short Track we call Bristol. Round six of the 98 Winston Cup Championship chase set to roll, and we're here to give you all of the pre-race scoop. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Despain down here alongside the concrete battleground, the scene of this afternoon's 500 miles of warfare. 500 laps around this joint will wear out your car and your nerves, and for the 136,000 people jammed into the joint, well, they're in for one of the wildest shows in motorsports. Each year, Winston Cup teams spend millions of dollars. When they come to Bristol, they bring the best cars, the finest equipment, talented crews and skillful drivers. But the one thing they can't bring here, they have to find. That's luck. And they're going to start looking for it in half an hour. This track at Bristol is so wicked fast, folks, and a lot of that is because of the 36 degrees of banking in the center of the turns. When a car has an accident, its natural instinct is just, yep, how about that? It's to roll to the bottom. At Bristol, guaranteed you'll end up on the inside of the track. I don't know. And the first five races of the year we've talked about downforce. We've talked about spoilers. We've talked about aerodynamics. Throw all that out the window. Here we're talking about springs, shock, hammond, beating and banging. That's Bristol. Hey, those first five races of the year have been something pretty special. This is the first Winston Cup short track of the new campaign. When you take a look at what's happened since the month of February, I think you can sum it up pretty easily. The 98 Winston Cup championship chase has been a heck of a show. In the season opener, Dale Earnhardt's long-sought Daytona 500 win kicked off a different winner every week's season. At Rockingham, the Winston Cup champ, Jeff Gordon, proved himself a threat to repeat. And at Vegas, Mark Martin gave the new Ford Taurus its first Winston Cup victory. Atlanta proved Pontiac's potential with Bobby Labonte aboard. And at Darlington, Dale Jarrett put the early season trouble behind him to become the fifth different winner in five races. It's been five years since that last happened, and if someone new wins today, it'll be the first time since 91 we've gone six for six. Coincidentally, in 91, it was today's pole sitter, Rusty Wallace, who became the sixth different winner in six races. Well, the chances of going six for six look pretty good with that two cars sitting on the pole because Rusty Wallace is, of course, uh, a six-time winner at this racetrack. Are you ready to reveal your Bristol secret of success here today? I'm ready. I'm ready. He's ready. He's ready. What are the likelihood that this bubble is going to burst? You had a lousy season last year. You're on a tremendous roll this year. Are you worried about waking up from this dream? No, we're on a rock and roll. We're going right to the front. We're not going to stand back. Check out the numbers. Pretty impressive in the 90s for Wallace and company. Look here, Rusty's got his own segment here. One of the perks of being a point leader. We're going to close that segment with a memory of Wallace's first Winston Cup victory. Guess where it happened? Today's golden anniversary remembrance of Bristol takes us back to 1986. Look at the kid, 29 years old back then, graduate of the ASA Wars. Rusty hadn't spent a lot of time in the NASCAR big leagues, but he was ready for the big league players. All those lessons learned on all those Midwestern short tracks paid off big. The Blue Max Pontiac hit the checker 10 seconds ahead of runner-up Ricky Rudd. Victory celebration, a double first. The crew chief, Barry Dodson. There's Barry. Yep. 
Yeah, I knew that. In the season opener, Dale Earnhardt's long sought Daytona 500 win kicked off a different winner every week's season. At Rockingham, the Winston Cup champ, Jeff Gordon, proved himself a threat to repeat. And at Vegas, Mark Martin gave the new Ford Taurus its first Winston Cup victory. Atlanta proved Pontiac's potential with Bobby Labonte aboard. And at Darlington, Dale Jarrett put the early season trouble behind him to become the fifth different winner in five races. It's been five years since that last happened, and if someone new wins today, it'll be the first time since 91 we've gone six for six. Coincidentally, in 91, it was today's pole sitter, Rusty Wallace, who became the sixth different winner in six races. now reached more than 131,000. Please welcome to the stage the Silver Fox himself, a three-time NASCAR Yeah, man.
Hey, Steve. Since we're on the big network, am I supposed to end NASCAR today with the words uh, presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports? All right. And am I going to... Okay. And the more important and relevant question might be, am I going to be in a lot of trouble if I don't do that in the heat of battle? Okay. Well, I kind of like being whipped, but... <laughs> yes. Is that going to be done graphically, or is that just me? The count that you'll be giving me at the end of the show is to the end of the show. So those graphics will come in at like 15 in your count. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to do my Bristol tickets joke if I if the timing works out. So I'll get that in. I'll get that in first, and then I'll do the ultimate sailing in the race. Twelve minutes to air. I don't see a sign of a pickup truck or a driver. I assume that that's all okay. But okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. Congratulations, I hope it works out real well. Yeah, I'd forgotten it. I wouldn't have put the face and the name together, but yeah. Pocket full of look. That's right, I remember that. Is race car. Race car. Yahoo! Yikes. On to president. I'm on the air. Nelson. He can a real do a lot of other things to the president, but don't haunt him. It's a real humdinger. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it's something. I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. I told you that the big Washington uh, party game now, right? Probably not. That's no worse than what you just said. Oh, that's right, but you're not on the satellite. I understand. I understand. I expect probably yeah, everybody's Chevy. heard it already anyway. So. Uh, no, because most of them are going to depend upon what happens with each individual car. I've got some notes, but, you know, it just you depends on how the race Steve, plays out. Right? Okay, if I need to move, just tell him. Steve. John says he thinks that they're running late, and so he's going to go over and see if it looks like we need to go to Wallace. Well, I mean, I could go there because then I. He's going to go check on it. He'll call you on the radio. So you have no communication with John. We badly need to resolve that problem. Maybe we'll save that for the fifth year of NASCAR today. The champion's provisional is making his way to the gate three, turn three gate. Yes, he is. But I assume that uh, Wallace will be the last one to, to come over, so. Wallace is getting on the golf cart. Yeah, I'm not concerned. I'm only concerned about Daryl because he provides me with the fallback, although it wouldn't be the same. Bill Elliott en route to the restroom. Another provisional. Yep. Well, you want to head up the hill? Right Let's hang here till we see if he's going to show up. All right. Okay. Okay. And one final time, making their way around the speedway back to their haulers and on their way back home to St. Louis, Missouri, the Budweiser Clydesdales. Head for Rusty. I can probably get there. My concern is if they're going to drive him over that I'll get, you know, 20 yards short of him and he'll leave. At which point, I guess Bill would pick him up over here, maybe. I can do that. You want me to head that way? All right. OK. 
key thing I need to know is his what what direction he moves. Okay. Thank you. One Taurus charged up a total of 33 positions. So on behalf of Exide, it's my pleasure to make this presentation to Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy? out here by the edge of the racetrack. Hey, Winston Cup racing hero. What's a one word description for Bristol? Wild. Hey, Winston Cup racing hero, what's a one word description for Bristol? Wild. Uncontrollable. A hail hole. Treasure. Mm. Fast. Intense. I couldn't say it on my air. <laughs> Behold the source of the driver's love-hate relationship with a racetrack, the Tennessee Mountain Short Track, we call Bristol. Round six of the 98 Winston Cup Championship chase set to roll. We're here to give you all the pre-race scoop. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Despain down here right at the edge of the concrete battlefield, the half-mile oval on the floor of Bristol Motor Speedway. 500 laps around here will wear out your car and your nerves. Around us, 136,000 people that are about to see one of the wildest shows in motorsports. Winston Cup racing is a delicate balancing act, especially when you race here. Teams spend millions of dollars, and when they come to Bristol, they bring the best cars, the finest equipment, talented crews, and skillful drivers. But the one thing they might need the most to keep their balance they can't bring with them. They have to find it here once the race starts. That's good luck, and they're about to start looking for it. You know, the 36 degrees of banking here at Bristol may be one of the reasons why this is such an exciting track. The fact that they get around here in 15 and a half seconds doesn't hurt either. 
but gravity often comes into play. Now imagine this is your race car. You get contact with the wall and believe it or not, sooner or later you're right down at the bottom. And a lot of times that catches up other drivers. But hey folks, that's just Bristol. The first five races of the year, the television and radio announcers have been talking about downforce and spoilers and front air dams and aerodynamics. Today at Bristol, we'll be talking about springs, shocks, sway bars, beating and banging. That's Bristol. Hey, you bet you. Five races down. This is the first of the Winston Cup short track races of the campaign. Driver introductions underway. I would make this conclusion. Those first five events have been one heck of a show. In the season opener, Dale Earnhardt's long-sought Daytona 500 win kicked off a different winner every week season. At Rockingham, the Winston Cup champ, Jeff Gordon, proved himself a threat to repeat. And at Vegas, Mark Martin gave the new Ford Taurus its first Winston Cup victory. Atlanta proved Pontiac's potential with Bobby Labonte aboard. And at Darlington, Dale Jarrett put the early season trouble behind him to become the fifth different winner in five races. It's been five years since that last happened, and if someone new wins today, it'll be the first time since 91 we've gone six for six. Coincidentally, in 91, it was today's pole sitter, Rusty Wallace, who became the sixth different winner in six races. And the chances that we will go six for six look pretty good with this guy sitting on the ball in the midst of getting ready to go get interviewed. Are you ready to reveal your secret at Bristol? Why are you so good at this joint? I don't know, Dave. I just We put a lot of effort into the uh, chassis setup, a lot of effort into all that type of stuff. And I know the feel I'm looking for when I come to Bristol. And you just got to work at it till you get that feel you want. And if you get it, then I always feel pretty comfortable. Plus, qualifying good does a lot. Fast pit stops, man, track positions, everything here. Here's the tough one. After the season you had last year, you come in here five top fives in five starts. Are you worried about waking up some morning having this dream end abruptly? Yeah, I really am, because it's going wonderful. What a great team I got, and everybody's pulling and smiling. i, I got to tell you, it's so much different from last year. It's unreal. So people are different. Our approach to doing business is different. The way we're working a car is different. So it's going good. He's got to go up there and get that pole sitter award. He stacked up some pretty impressive numbers at this joint over the years, and he also gets his own segment here. I guess it's a perk of being the point leader. Let's remember a favorite 50th anniversary moment. Today's golden anniversary remembrance of Bristol takes us back to 1986. Look at the kid, 29 years old back then, graduate of the ASA Wars. Rusty hadn't spent a lot of time in the NASCAR big leagues, but he was ready for the big league players. All those lessons learned on all those Midwestern short tracks paid off big. The Blue Max Pontiac hit the checker 10 seconds ahead of runner-up Ricky Rudd. Victory celebration, a double first. The crew chief, Barry Dodson. There's Barry. Also scored his first Winston Cup victory. It all happened right here at Bristol, and that was 12 years ago. Yeah, it's going to depend on how it falls with him being introduced. Okay. I'll hang with Jeff and we'll see how it falls as far as his introduction is concerned. Last week, those moments were easy to identify. Jeff, you still got my pen? Yeah, he hasn't been uh, called up for the introduction right, yet, right. so. I just run out of pen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got about 45 seconds. We're going to start this, and if you get called, just go. Okay. Are you okay with that?
last year this race. Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace finishing nose to tail. Today they start side by side. That could be fun. Terry Labonte, a two-time winner. Mike Skinner, hurt but still fast. Gordon is about to get introduced. I want to talk to him real quick because I was just watching. They gave Rusty Wallace a chainsaw in the presentation right there. Are you at all concerned about what he might do with that during the afternoon? <laughs> that, that could be a concern, yes. Uh, you know, I tell you what, uh, we, we've had some good battles uh, between Rusty and me here, and I, I'm sure that uh, we're going to see some more today uh, with us start, starting side by side. And he's always a guy to beat at this racetrack, and hopefully we can be competitive enough to make it a great race like we did the last time. You had kind of a misstep here in the last Bristol race that ended a long streak of success. Are you ready to get a good short track spring started again? Definitely. We're really excited about being back uh, at the short tracks. And, you know, we've got to take advantage of the tracks that we run good at. And this is certainly one of them. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get back on track here today. I've lost track of how many in a row he's won. He's got to go up and get introduced. We'll take a look at the rest of the head of the field here. Dale Jarrett, of course, beat Jeff last week by a car length. Bobby Labonte is top Pontiac. Further back, we've got uh, three Roush Fords in the top ten. And Morgan Shepard will drive for Wally Dallenbach, who has a hernia. Let's go back over to the other side of the racetrack and see who's hiding out over there. Well, Johnny Benson is hiding out over here, but he's not hiding out. You're not that tall. Hang on a second. Okay, this is much better. Hey, you, you got a good starting spot here, don't you? Oh, we sure do. You know, Steve Mayo and the guys did a tremendous job on qualifying deal, and, man, we ended up eight. Yeah, uh, tell me about driving that car at this track. Uh, I did. It's a new car, same car we had last week, and, and it's, it's been great. It's, it drives really well. Um, you know, like I said, we qualified good, so we're excited about that. And it was just, uh, you know, man, you know about this place. Everybody see it. It's just hard to get around. And we're excited about the race, so I, th I think we'll be okay. And, we, we just have to run about 100 laps, 150 laps to see what the car's going to do for the end of the race. Have fun. Always have fun. Man, that's all the fans are great here, and it just, it's just great to be down here. Okay, Dave. You know, for the most part, Winston Cup races tend to run about three hours, and they're filled with ups and downs for every fan favorite driver. But at the end of the day, with the benefit of hindsight, you can kind of boil the whole day down to a couple of three defining moments. Last week, those moments were easy to identify. One was Jeff Burton blowing off the top two guys in the points, Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield retaking the lead he held most of the day. The other had to be Jeff Gordon running his heart out against all those Fords and coming this close to passing Dale Jarrett for the last lap win. And around those defining moments, subplots worth mentioning. Mayfield's run from a provisional to the lead, making good on a NASCAR Today prediction, and only the final yellow kept him from winning his first race. Meanwhile, Darlington, supposed to be where Rusty Wallace would self-destruct. Nothing like that happened. Gordon, of course, leapt into the Winston Cup top five by demonstrating that his Chevy can still challenge the Fords for the win, and the consummate points racer Earnhardt, third rank, has that consistency thing going again. And the defining soundbite of the weekend, Jeff Burton, after leading all but 100 laps and disappearing on the last green flag run, he was frustrated on Motor Racing Network. We just got real loose. The uh, car was pretty good the next to last run, and it's hard to make a huge change to the race car when it's that good, and we needed a huge change. Uh, I don't know how to take a car that's led the most laps and has dominated the race and say, okay, we got 40 laps to go, we got to make it totally different. I'm just not smart enough to understand how to do that. Well, a week ago, Jeff Burton had a really great race. And some people would say he had a really great finish. You let go of that, John Andre. See, this is what this job is so dangerous. See, you never know what's going on. Hey, were you disappointed after the race last week? Uh, <laughs> not near as disappointed as you are right now. This is killing my career, isn't it? <laughs> Kenny Mayne will bail you out. Uh, yeah, we, were just, we had a good run, but uh, we were disappointed all at the same time. But uh, this is a different deal today. You just try to finish this thing. What did you learn? I'm sorry. What'd you learn? Um, I learned we weren't as smart as we thought we were all day long. I don't know what we learned. Uh, we bolted a set of tires on and made it, you know, made it, tried to make the car tighter and it was looser. So I don't know what we can take out of it other than we learned something. We just hadn't quite figured out what it is yet. Okay, don't listen to anything these guys are telling you. That's Jeff Burton, his brother, all kinds of guys down here waiting for the Food City 500. It should be a great race today. Don't you think so, Bob Jenkins? I think you better get out of there before you lose your life. <laughs> he really is in bad shape. <laughs> you know, uh, Dave mentioned earlier in the show that Bristol wears out your car and it wears out your nerves. There's also a physical aspect that you have to think about. It really is. This is the toughest racetrack on the circuit physically, and I'm concerned about Morgan Shepard. 
because he really hasn't raced that much. Now, he ran most of the race last week at Darlington, but coming to Bristol and having to run 500 laps for your first race of the year, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Neck, is that the major part that wears out first? That's right, because when you go in the corner, the seat kind of holds the body in, but you've got this big head, helmet and head. Your head weighs about 16 pounds. As you go in the corner, mine weighs about 18 pounds. When you go in the corner, it's trying to fling it out the door. You've got a strap around your arm that you hold your head over with, but that's really not enough. Well, Jeremy Mayfield is standing by to be interviewed by our Ray Dunlap. Well, and Bob, as we take a look at the top ten in points, we see that Jeremy Mayfield is second. Now, a year ago, you were 20th. What did you guys do different? I don't know. We haven't changed a lot other than our sponsor, car owner number, car colors, everything. So it's hard to tell what, what is the difference. But we got a great race team. Uh, the Mobile One Fords run really good, you know, through testing all, uh, the whole first part of this year. So just a lot of things going on for us right now. Now, seven of the guys that are in the top ten have won here at this racetrack. You ready to add your name to that list? I'm ready. I'm pumped up. Uh, the car's running really good. Rusty's running good. Uh, it's going to be a good show today. Okay, good luck. Dave Despain. They've been Colin Wallace and Mayfield team terrific for good reason since they joined forces. Their combined average finish position up 13.2. Robin Pemberton says of the team, it's not having new guys to talk to. It's the fact that they don't lie to us. We'll be right back. After the break, Benny's book is going to run down the key elements of the Bristol success formula. We're also going to talk about the business success that this place has enjoyed in recent years. see me here you want an on-camera lead to the garage Sounded pretty funny. We talked about business success. Ten years ago, 30,000 was a good crowd at Bristol. Today, 130,000 in the seats, 5,000 more in the skyboxes. That's big business. What Bristol does not have is garages. We, on the other hand, have Ray's Garage with a look at this unique place. You know, normally on Friday mornings when the cars get to the racetrack, the teams take the cars out of the transporters and push them into a nice shiny garage area. Well, here at Bristol, there is no garage area, so the teams are forced to work on pit road. Now, this area is nowhere near level, so the teams have created adjustable scale pads. By screwing down or up this little adjustment on each corner of the scale pad, it actually helps them level up the scale, and that gives you an accurate reading. Now, each of the teams have also created a bar which goes between the back scale and the front scale in order to be able to measure the ride height of the car. And here at Bristol, you hope to raise the car up about three-eighths of an inch higher than most racetracks. Just another thing that the teams have created to make their work a lot easier. Well, Terry Labonte says he has a good race car for this track and a pretty good starting position, too, don't you? Well, we do. We uh, run pretty well since we've been here. We qualified pretty good. Really worked hard on it yesterday in the last practice, try to get it as good as we could. You know, you always want to be a little bit better, but I think we're pretty close. You want to slide across that finish line, take the checkers again here today? <laughs> well, we sure love to, to win one. You know, we uh, feel like this is a good chance for us, a racetrack like this. We've got to stay out of trouble. We run good all day. I know we'll have good pit stops, so, uh, you know, we're going to do our best. Okay, that's Terry in the Kellogg's car. Here's Brother Bobby. Well, Bobby Labonte will start seventh today. That's a pretty good starting spot here at Bristol. 
it's a really good starting spot. But uh, I don't know how long I'll be there. <laughs> but it's a great starting spot. I, we had a good qualifying run. We're not really sure. Our race setup's not quite as good as that, but uh, made some changes. We'll see how it's going to turn out. 500 laps is tough here. How demanding is it on the driver? It's pretty tough. I mean, it's, it's a, it makes for a long day, but, uh, you know, once you get in a rhythm, it seems like it goes by a little faster. If, if your car's not handling good, it'll go by. It won't ever go by. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can get the Interstate Pontiac running really good so it'll be a good rhythm race for us and we can be safe and be out of trouble and finish the race in a good position. Well, after that Darlington race, he lost a couple of points position. He'll start in ninth, po or ninth points position today. The long way to the top of this joint. The guys in the ties are high in the sky today. They include Benny Parsons, a former winner of the race who shares his winner's wisdom in this edition of Benny's book. Even though Bristol is a short track, it is F-A-S-T. Let me explain. F stands for feel. Up until this race, the aerodynamics of the car's makeup has been of the utmost importance. But here, a driver has to feel his way around the racetrack and feel the performance of the car underneath. A stands for aggressive. You have to drive aggressively at Bristol. If you find yourself behind a slow car, watch out. Before you know it, you'll find yourself a lap down. S stands for setup. The most important ingredient in Bristol racing. In a perfect world, a car would get around Bristol in a matter of a few seconds. But because of the physics involved with turning in the corners, that's impossible. So you find the right combination of springs, shocks, and sway bar adjustments to give your car the extra split second to get on the throttle that could mean the difference in several finishing positions. And T stands for tough. Bristol is the most demanding track in Winston Cup racing. When you turn, your body, and in particular your head, wants to go straight. So to fight the G-forces, a driver will use a head brace and will use a leather strap connected to his helmet from under his left arm. So when he goes into a turn, as his shoulder drops, it will throw his head against a natural G-force. So how do you spell Bristol? Feel, aggression, setup, and it's tough. Tough, tough, tough is trying to jam all the weekend racing highlights into one 30-minute show. But Reese Davis will do it tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time on RPM tonight. Be there. I will. Bye. Take a little back, uh, a little further back through the grid. We've got a Bodine reunion from 16th to 20th. Three of them in there. Rookies Nadu and LePage qualifying in the top 25. Human interest story, Kenny Irwin and Ernie Irvin qualified right together. From here on back, you're worried about getting lapped early. The provisionals are notable for the 11 Winston Cup champions. Among 11 Winston Cup championships, three drivers back there among the provisionals. Now from 22nd on back, pit road is the back stretch. That is bad news. No matter where you start, your best friend here is Lady Luck, and that is the subject of track talk. Just right, guys. Just right. Half a pound on the left side. Go, 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 go. Whether you're lucky enough to make it through a wreck or uh, lucky enough to dodge a wreck, uh, you know, the things happen so fast here that... Uh, that's the hard part is, is having a little luck and having things go your way all night long. 
uh, in order to get you up front and uh, have a chance to win. I'd rather be lucky than good. You heard that saying a lot of times from the veteran drivers, but uh, I still say it's uh, true to the heart. You know, Bristol is so fast, so close quarters. It's really amazing there's not any more accidents than there really is. You know, you'd rather be good than lucky, I think, here, because, um, you know, you got to get the car handling good, but then in the same token, as soon as you say that, you know, somebody blow up in front of you, to be a wreck, and then you're in it. So you need a little bit of everything. You know, everybody thinks there's one certain thing here at Bristol, and it's not. Boy, you got to be good, and then you got to be lucky. So you got to have everything to have this day work for you. With a little luck, Rick Mast might have had the pole here, but it was bad luck. You start 19th. Uh, you want to get through here with a little luck and some points when we're done. Yeah, man, last two races have been horrendous for us, you know, but I tell you, my Remington car is loaded. You know what I mean? We, we kind of messed up qualifying. We thought we had a shot at the pole. We were real good in practice again. Made the first round each week. That was one of our goals, you know. We want to be up there in points. Last two races messed up. What I like about Bristol, uh, the, the people, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tons of people here, man. We're all, all the drivers were talking a while ago. We're about half claustrophobic in this place right now. But, you know, really, honestly, the track, it's hot today. Uh, a lot of guys yesterday afternoon in happy hour did a lot of weird stuff to the cars trying to get hooked up this racetrack. The track seemed like it changed around a little bit. You know, you're using the August notes when it's hot here. And that's daytime practice, not nighttime race. Little different setups on some of these cars today. My car is a little different, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, the big thing here, as Ben and everybody knows, is get through the wrecks, man. Get through the wrecks. If you're around at the finish, you got a shot at it. We'll see if Rick's around when they're done. Dave? Hey, speaking of wrecks, next week we're going back to Texas. Remember all the wrecks there? Yeah, we had a bunch of those, didn't we? It's going to be the anniversary of Jeff Burton's very first Winston Cup victory. And we'll get you all amped up for it on NASCAR Today on ESPN2. <laughs> I, I have not found Brad. Huge crowd are all on their feet in anticipation of the opportunity to meet Miss Virginia. She'll be rendering our national anthem today. Her name is Kelly with an I quick. And uh, I tell you what, the folks are pretty excited about that. Let's hope she's ready to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the reigning Miss Virginia, Miss Kelly Quick from Richland, Virginia, as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Watched with a gallant beast. 
Let's hear from uh, a couple more competitors here as we begin to run out of time. Ray Dunlap, who you got there, buddy? Well, Dave, I got Ernie Irvin. And Ernie, you've been to Victory Lane here at Bristol, but it's pretty tough to do from the back stretch. Can you get the Skittles Pontiac there today? Well, I tell you, it's tough to do from the front stretch. Wherever you start here, um, you know, Bristol's a hard place. Um, you know, obviously, it's going to be really tough from the back straight. Um, I think the Skittles Pontiac is running good. Um, it's just a matter of um, but getting in the right place at the right time. Well, stay out of trouble out there. Dave Despain is caught up with Earnhardt. Yeah, he gave me a pretty good whack as I was walking by him trying to get to the back of the grid. It's not very far to the back of the grid from where Earnhardt starts today. Does that mean you're feeling kind of physical? You might have to be to get to the front. It's a physical place. Uh, I don't know. We, we worked awful hard on this, Jim Goodrich and Chevrolet. I don't know. Well, I hope we got it in shape. I think we have. We got to pull all, all, all our old notes out and uh, tune and fine tune and worked hard, and I think we'll be okay. What's up with this qualifying deal? I don't know. we got to get better at it, I can tell you that. I, I think so. That's Earnhardt. He's back there in the back, but he's going to the front. I'll tell you what, it is going to be one heck of an afternoon. The key to this place, keep your race car on the bottom. Be able to get on the gas coming off the corner and not have the thing go up the hill. Let me make an observation here as we look at this capacity crowd. We all get old over time. Eventually, we all must die. That is true of all of these people filling all of these seats. And that, ladies and gentlemen, means there is hope. There is hope. Someday, you may be able to get Bristol tickets. I wouldn't bet on it, but it's a possibility. I will tell you this, coming up next on ESPN2, we've got Ultimate Sailing. We're simulcast today. We're on the big network. If you're on ESPN, stay right where you are and get ready to rock and roll because the Food City 500 is coming your way. I'm Dave Despain, and today I have been a presentation of ESPN, the world leader in sports. So long, everybody. You need only peer into a valley in the Tri-Cities area of Tennessee to realize that indeed NASCAR Winston Cup racing is the fastest growing sport in the country. 20 years ago, a big crowd here was 35,000. More than 135,000 are here today along with 50 Harley Davidsons traveling at 50 miles an hour as the NASCAR birthday celebration continues. Welcome to the sixth race of the year. ESPN salutes the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing on its 50th anniversary. 1998 has been a thrilling season punctuated with drama and wonder. The first five winners have brought us a mix of sparkling magic, chilling muscle, and some good old-fashioned desire. Rusty Wallace has seen it all. The Penske twins still lead the points, and Wallace has been patiently sitting, waiting for his turn to win. Perhaps this is his turn. This is his track. No matter the car, the color, or even the time of day or night, this veteran is an able volunteer for victory in Tennessee. A six-pack of wins here. But Rusty hasn't flashed that winning smile in 34 races. Now he looks to yesterday to brighten tomorrow. Rusty Wallace is searching for that fine line between pressure and praise. And this is the perfect place for Rusty to race right now in the mountains of East Tennessee because he's got a mountain of his own to climb. In the first five races, everyone has been expecting Rusty to stumble. Now they expect him to win. And so does he. So do I. So does everybody, except maybe the 42 guys that start behind him. 
five different winners in the first five races. The last time the NASCAR Winston Cup season started with six different winners was 1991. The sixth race was here, and the winner was Wallace. To be successful in a game of high-speed Bristol bumper tag, a driver has to try moves that only rarely work. From the drop of the green flag, you must remember you're only 10 seconds away from being lapped. Disregard all the strategy and planning used in other races. Now it's time to rely simply on instinct and guts. The big money payout only comes on lap 500, so stay on the lead lap. And remember, at Bristol, anything can happen. There's no question about it that Rusty Wallace Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett have been the kings of the short track racing in Winston Cup. But in this field today, there are nine different drivers that have won here at Bristol. And four of them folks will be pitting all the way over on the backstretch, including Dale Earnhardt and also Bill Elliott. Now, only one driver has ever won from the backstretch, and that is Davey Allison. And he was driving this car, the number 28 Texaco Haviland Ford. And today, it'll be Kenny Irwin that pilots that car, making his Winston Cup debut at Bristol. An unbelievable day for him. He wants to win, but first he has to finish 500 laps. You know, some tracks have a lot of wide open spaces. Take Talladega, for example. 43 cars on 2.66 miles. But here at the half mile high banks of Bristol Motor Speedway, 43 cars. Well, that's like 215 cars racing at Talladega. Everywhere you turn, there's somebody. Somebody to your left, somebody to your right, somebody behind you, somebody ahead of you. It can be very frustrating. You can feel almost like you're boxed in. And when you get frustrated, that can cause some problems. And when those problems occur, tempers begin to flare. From Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee, ESPN Speed World presents the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500. Rusty Wallace is on top of the point standings by only 54 over his teammate, the defending series champion Jeff Gordon, fourth. And the guy who won on this track last fall in the night race, Dale Jarrett, comes in 10th in the point standings. This is absolutely unbelievable here. Look at the crowd. They've increased the seating capacity to 130,000 here, and every seat is filled as the crowd anticipates the running of 500 laps at Bristol. Absolutely incredible. Well, we're ready for some racing. You know, when we were in Darlington last week, we did the weight thing and how critical it was for just a little bit of tire pressure maybe to upset the balance of the car. This week, maybe the balance is at the driver's command. You know, Bob, part of makeup of all great athletes is his ability or their ability to concentrate. And I can't imagine any athlete in any sport where the concentration level has to be higher for a longer period of time than the race drivers here for 500 laps at the Bristol Motor Speedway. It is very mentally tiring, and they have to be very patient to win here. It just a lapse of concentration for a moment can put them out of position to win. Well, you gotta be patient, but you also have to be very aggressive, and you can be in trouble very quick here. You can get lapped very quick here, so Benny, tough place to race. It is tough, and it's so doggone tough physically, and that's one thing that hurts the concentration, because if they run 100 laps a day, some of these drivers will literally have their tongue hanging, hanging out, because they will be exhausted. And it's hard to concentrate like you need to when you're just that tired. The crowd can't wait. They're doing the wave as the drivers anticipate the command to start engines here in just a moment. But just look at this place. You wouldn't recognize it from five years ago, and you certainly wouldn't recognize it from ten years ago. They have done an incredible job of building new stands and accommodating the drivers and the spectators. There isn't a bad seat in the house. 43 cars and drivers are lined up on pit road, getting set to go on to the racetrack. And they, of course, will have to battle it for 500 laps here this afternoon in the Food City 
500. Beautiful day here. There's partly cloudy skies and a temperature in the upper 70s. Excellent racing conditions for both the drivers and for the spectators. Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost time for the most famous words in all of motorsports. Please welcome back the Grand Marshal for today, Food City 500, the president of the University of Tennessee, Joseph Johnson. Gentlemen, start your engine. With that, the cars fire to life. The waiting is almost over for the spectators. They are set for some racing, and so are we. And we'll be back to give you the starting lineup and get this thing going in just a moment from Bristol Motor Speedway. Okay. No ninety eight, no ninety eight. No ninety eight. Hmm, where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know, it was Mike's fault. I'll do seven. Okay, roast seven. <clears throat> yep, he doesn't wear a strap. <clears throat> yeah. And I'll do through 14th row and they'll do the rest mm -hmm. of them. Can I borrow this one? Yeah, sure can. Thank you. of the Food City 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway being brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By First Plus Financial. At First Plus, we're working first for you. And by Genuine Chevrolet, the car's more champions trust. Cars begin to roll out. And take a couple of warm-up laps before we get going. Race record is held by Kale Yarborough, but that was set way back in 1977. The purse is over 1.7, almost 1.8 million dollars. They're going to need a fuel stop between laps 140 to 160. We'll probably have a few yellows before then. Today's field consists of 22 Fords and 14 Chevys and seven Pontiacs, and the battle for the manufacturer's championship going into this event is tied between Ford and Chevy at 34 points each. Here's the Everstart Walmart grid. On the pole is Rusty Wallace, his fourth pole here at Bristol, alongside Jeff Gordon going for four straight wins in this event. Row number two, Terry Labonte with two wins at this facility and Mike Skinner. The third row, Jeff Burton, his best Bristol finish in eight races is fourth, and Dale Jarrett, who won here last year. In the fourth row, Bobby Labonte, the winner in Atlanta earlier, and Johnny Benson, 16th in points after missing one race. The fifth row is Mark Martin, five consecutive Bristol top fives, and Jeremy Mayfield, his best finish here, a ninth. 
the sixth row, Greg Sachs, his best start of 98, and Morgan Shepard subbing for Wally Dallenbach. The seventh row, Kenny Wallace, the poll winner here last August, and Kenny Schrader, who was sixth in the final rundown last August. On the inside of row eight is Derek Cope. On the outside, Todd Bodine, two Bush wins here. In row nine, subbing for Craven is Randy LaJoy, Jeff Bodine. Fifth at Rockingham this year. In row 10, Rick Mass, poll winner at Rockingham, and Brett Bodine, new crew chief, Jerry Kennan, back in row 11. John Andretti on the inside, Kevin LePage, a rookie on the outside. In row 12, Jerry Nadeau, his first time ever to Bristol, and Sterling Marlin in row 13. Hutch Strickland and Jimmy Spencer, his best finish at Bristol is fourth. In row 14 this afternoon, Kenny Irwin, a rookie, and Ernie Irvin. And in row 15, we find Ted Musgrave and David Green. Row 16, Robert Presley and Michael Waltrip. Row 17, Kyle Petty and Chad Little. Row 18, Ricky Rudd and Lake Speed. Row 19 is made up of a pair of formal champions, Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott. Row 20 is Ward Burton and Bobby Hamilton. Row 21, Dick Prickle and Steve Grissom and Darrell Waltrip in the 43rd position. We have several on board cameras that will be covering the action here today. There's Bill Ellis, McDonald's Ford. Started back in 30th spot, and then his teammate, Jerry Nadu, first plus financial. He started up in the 23rd spot. Randy LaJoy, the Budweiser Chevrolet, will start 17th, as you see. Todd Bodine, the Briggs and Stratton on board camera. Also, Kenny Wallace will carry a camera in his square D Ford. And Mark Martin, who starts way up in the front, will be also carrying an onboard camera. Mike Skinner be carrying the onboard camera for started in four spot out road outside the row second row and the pole center Rusty Wallace Miller line onboard camera pace car has the field in tow now they're gonna make another lap but no 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 they're coming oh, the green right now can't turn it in and the green flag waves the food city 500 is underway to the rear bumper of the Briggs and Stratton on board Todd Bonine's car. Oh, we have some cars getting all mixed up there in the second turn. They're sliding around, but everybody keeps it straight. David Green lost a lot of positions, though, as his car got out of control. Everybody's okay, though. And here's trouble off turn four. Jerry Nadeau spins around. He keeps going, and Lake Speed hits the inside pit wall, and that's going to cause the caution. Speed is still inside. I thought maybe everybody was going to get through and turn in the right direction. We could save this caution, but not the case as Lake Speed slid into the inside wall. Not a lot of damage, but enough that he could not get the car started. The fender's knocked in on the left front tire, and he is a lap down. I tell you what, these guys cannot, just cannot catch a break. I'm talking about Lake Speed and the Mellon Cartoon Network crew. Seems like if trouble's on the racetrack, it reaches out and finds Lake Speed. Over in turn two, there was a big mix up. Here that is. Something happened up front, and John Andretti stopped, tried to stop to avoid that, and behind him, that was a near wreck. The cars get around to the front stretch, and there on the inside of Jerry Nadeau, I guess, is Kenny Irwin. Is that not Irwin Ned? Looks like him. Makes some so. contact off the corner. Around goes Nadeau. Now he spins around, does a 360, nails that gasoline to keep it off the wall. And behind, someone no doubt will run in the back of, I guess Lake Speed was just trying to dodge somebody. And boom, just touched the wall with the left front. So two of the rookie contenders get tangled up and cause a problem here on the main stretch. There's the contact between Kenny Irwin and Jerry Nadeau, sending Nadeau's car 
into a full 360. And then others getting tagged behind and Lake Speed into the wall. Here's the first plus financial on board. He does a great that, job. That was unbelievable, man. <laughs> I mean, how in the world he spun there and got so many cars in. Dale Jarrett is in the pits already changing tires. Wow, an unscheduled pit stop here in the seventh lap under caution. This is going to cost Dale a lot of track position, but better to do it now than under green. He got caught on the outside and dropped back from sixth to tenth on the uh, start of the race. Bill Weber, what's going on? He had a flat left front tire. Flat left front tire. Jarrett comes down pit road. We'll update here in a second, but that cost him a lot of track position. Ray Dunlap. Well, Bill, Lake Speed came in with the Cartoon Network car, but they did not change tires. There was just a minor amount of damage to the left front. The crew banged out the fender. They sent him back out on the racetrack. So everybody is still going, except we do have a couple of cars that lost a lap. Uh, Ricky Rudd lost a lap, and so did Lake Speed in the number nine car. Field is being given the indication that we'll go back to racing next time around. It's Rusty Wallace up front, followed by Terry Labonte, and Jeff Gordon. Bill? This is the left front tire off Dale Jarrett's car. Benny Valstim. Looks like somehow it got broken off. That's what happens when two cars get awfully close. Something just reaches out and stops and snaps that Valstim up. When it does, all there leaves the tire. Dale Ready. Earnhardt came Ready. out uh, ahead Ready. of all of that. Ready. 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 Green comes out. Back to racing, Rusty Wallace is leading for the 17th time here at Bristol. And Earnhardt trying to pick up another position from Kenny Irwin. A little bit of bumping there in the third quarter, and Earnhardt does get the spot. Ooh, and Irvin's going to lose some more spots, too. The train will go by once you get up in that outside groove. Everybody takes advantage of it, center behind you, and try to move in and move around you. Well, our scoring monitor indicated that Rudd had lost a lap, but he has not. The only car that did lose a lap was Lake Speed. In fact, Rudd is running up there in 29th position. Right on top of the Bill Elliott as he goes down in the corner. We see Kenny Irvin is still caught on the outside. Bill wants to get there right on the back of the 21. So Wait a minute. Kenny, don't come down too quickly. I want to get by as well. And they check. And they let it back off a little bit. Let's Irwin get back in the groove. Meanwhile, up front, Terry Labonte continues to pursue Rusty Wallace. He didn't pursue him long. He's got to make a move going into turn three. No, he couldn't quite do it. Rusty slides up just a little bit, but still, Labonte can get by. Rusty left that lower lane empty for just a moment, and Terry was unable to take advantage of it. First four cars, that includes Wallace, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Burton, have kind of separated themselves from the fifth place car of Mike Skinner. Bobby Labonte and Greg Sachs got together a little bit going into turn three. They were okay. Labonte lost about three positions. Yeah, he did. He lost a lot of positions. As he got caught on the outside. Morgan Shepard driving the 46 cars in 10th place. Bobby Labonte is in 11th. And we're on board with Kenny Wallace now. Rusty Wallace continuing to lead here at Bristol as 17 laps have been completed out of the 500 that make up the Food City 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
He's not pushing him like the five car was yet. to Bristol and the Food City 500. We have a new leader. Terry Labonte has gotten the lead from Rusty Wallace. In fact, spin over here. Jerry Nadeau again coming off of turn four. And he's damaged that car extensively. He was fortunate the first time, Bobby. He didn't hit anything, but Water. this time he did. It's a yeah, he's broken the radiator and maybe the oil cooler on the car. You see behind the car. All Go ahead, this follow behind yellow. the wall when you get here, Jerry, and we'll uh, ready here in it. While we were in break, we did have a lead change. Here's how Terry Labonte went to the front of the field, getting by Rusty Wallace. Comes off the second corner, gets on the inside, and, you know, Rusty Wallace really did not fight him like you had, we've seen Rusty fight before. Could be as a points leader would have something to do with that, huh, Ned? I would say so. He's uh, he's driving very smart now, no doubt about it. He, he takes what his car will give him right now. He knows he's already led the race, got those five bonus points. And here's Gordon. Got by him also right before the caution came out. Yep, Jeff moved to second position and putting Rusty back to third. We're on board. Jerry Nadeau. We'll see what happens. hit anything but he sure made contact with the third turn wall in that incident he has gone behind the pit wall and they have some work to do on the first plus financial for Taurus. Terry Labonte the leader back in a minute. Uh-huh. Didn't look like he got any bump any help did it? Yeah, didn't look like it. Hey y'all. A lot of uh, how you doing? I think had a bunch of cars. Oh, okay. Well, he's been banging around a good bit out there. The, the 30 car did? He can have came in the pits. Oh, I see. Driver change there? I don't know if they changed drivers or not. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah. was, there, was there a driver change in the 30 car? Jeff, right? No. Green is going to. Thank you, Slob. Jeff Green, right? Yes, yeah. I'm standing by. Unbelievable. Is that spotters over there in turn three, I guess? Hmm. Like, must be lined up like ducks in a row. Like doves on the power line. <laughs> no promo. B 
field is but a half a lap from green here. This shot courtesy of the Pennzoil copter cam hovering over Bristol Motor Speedway. Pace car off the racetrack. We're ready to go back to racing. Get ready? Ready? Get ready. Get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He just came out of the pits, Ben. He'd been back there for about 18 laps. And uh, he just came back out onto the racetrack. On board with Mark Martin, who's sixth. That's Mike Skinner up ahead, passing late speed. Here's our Tabasco Hot Zone telemetry. Be down to just 102 mile per hour in the middle of the corner. Up to about 126 mile per hour. For an average speed of about 115 miles per hour. The RPM 70. What's his accelerates down the corner? That time is going to get up to about 7,800. Now Jeremy Mayfield just picked up his spot. He went around uh, Mark Martin, so make move Mayfield to the sixth position. Johnny Benson in the 26 car right on Mark's tail now. On the Jack Roush repaired cars. Talked to Jimmy Finley this morning. He said they're not quite right. Talking about Mark Mark car with the Babylon Ford. They were concerned about it. Talking to the crews and crew chiefs this morning, the biggest concern they have is because this is going to be one of the warmest days they've ever raced at Bristol in the last 10 or 15 years. The night race is warmer, but when the sun goes down, the racetrack does get some adhesion to it. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be just almost a spin there. It's Morgan on the back, right on the back bumper of Greg Sachs. They made some contact, but Sachs moved up the hill, and now the train is going by. Yeah, those guys have been trying to wreck for several laps. Uh, the 98 car now up in the outside lane and sees a lot of drivers pass by, including Ken Schrader up ahead. And now Todd Bodine exchanges a little paint with Greg Sachs and also moves up a position. Here comes Randy LaJoy. Well, they're doing some serious rubbing in the corner, and that's how they all around. They're all around. That's how Dale Jarrett had that no, left front tire go flat, is rubbing like that. Bill can update the 18 car of Bobby Labonte, who's running 11. And we heard him in NASCAR today talk about how they were good at qualifying, but they were awful in final practice here on Saturday. Right now, Bobby says the car continues to push up the racetrack. We're going to go down two rounds on the right rear track bar, so Bobby fighting a handling problem. And further down pit road is John Kearney. Eric Cope started from the 30th position. He's been on pit road twice during that last caution. He started 15th. Now he's dropped back to the pack in the 30 car. He got into the back of somebody and made have some severe damage on the right front of the car. But hey, this is Bristol. Aerodynamics aren't that big a deal. They taped it up. Derek back out on the track. And he is trying to play catch up in a hurry right now because Terry Labonte is closing in on the guys at the tail end. Here comes more by the 98 of Greg Sachs, John Andretti, Ted Musgrave, and Dale Earnhardt also moves up a spot. Jimmy Spencer, meanwhile, is up there in that outside lane. He's caught, and he's losing several positions. Well, he had passed Ernie Irvin on the outside, but then he moved up on some other cars, and he couldn't go that well up there, so now Irvin has passed him back. 
Robert Press is trying to do it on the outside and also now we see Ernie Irvin trying to get on the inside of Sachs in the corner is a contact no Sachs moves up gives him some racing room now Spencer's going to try to follow all this from the Pennzoil copter cam again you sit back there in the middle of a pack like that see how they're running bumper to bumper and actually bumping a little bit and you've got a race car that will go faster than you're going but, and, you know, you, you want to go, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, and those running up front are shortening the distance before lapping begins. Look at that. I mean, there, there's Labonte, and there's that pack of cars that every one of them does not want to get lapped. They definitely want to get in front. Dale Jarrett is right in the middle of that group as he had an unscheduled tire change after breaking a valve stem. That has put him right now back to 33rd position and unable to do much running in this much traffic. Fifty-one laps are completed. Labonte leads over Gordon Burton, and we have a crash. Ted Musgrave and Ricky Rudd are going around. That's on the Todd, back street. Okay. Todd Bodine is the other car involved besides Musgrave. I'm sorry, that was Todd Bodine, not Ricky Rudd. I looked up and saw that orange car and thought it was Rudd. I'm sorry. Third caution of the day here. And there's damage to the Tabasco Grand Prix side. of Todd Bodine, and there's also damage to Ted Musgrave's car. How in the world did he get the hood, Bentley? He must have driven under Ted Musgrave's Back car. Up. Todd's pit is the first one off of turn four, and he's already gone in there for repair work. Here's a replay. Okay, the orange car in front there is Todd Bodine, and here comes Musgrave. They make contact right there. And Todd spins around, and then, yeah, Musgrave just runs right up over the left front of the Todd Bodine car. <laughs> well, we're going to be seeing some pit stops here. They all come. Bill Weber, they're coming to you. Terry Labonte will lead the parade down pit road. This could be a break for Jeff Burton. They thought he might have a, a tire going down. The 524 and the 2 on your screen. Rusty Wallace has the first pit on pit road, so he's got the easy out. One pound out of all the tires, but the right front on Rusty, and one round of wedge in the left rear. Gordon's got his tires on the right side. They're around to the left on the 5 also. Duel going in. 54 left on the board. Waiting on Rusty. He's down. He beats Terry Labonte out. Gordon should be next by Martin, the seventh, then Ray, Ray on the back stretch. Well, Bill, Dale Earnhardt's team is in. They're going to do a four-tire stop here. They're going to make a little bit of an adjustment because Dale said the car is tight. Coming off the corner. Now, Kyle Petty removed some tape, some tape off the front grill to make his car a little bit better. 18.9 seconds for Earnhardt. And the scramble to get off the back stretch. Pitts goes on. You see where Dale Earnhardt falls into the group. Another great pit stop by the Rusty Wallace team here on the front stretch. So the third caution waves after 55 laps. This incident on the back stretch between Ted Musgrave and Todd Bodine. Stand by for more live coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. I saw an orange car and right away mm. said Rudd. I thought the same thing. Mm. <clears throat> he kind of run over that left front, didn't he? <laughs> mm -hmm. Man. Yes, he did. Here's to see where Kyle's going to come out in this mix. Dino. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for showing it to yes. us. Yeah. <laughs> RPM will have it tomorrow. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, where was he running? I guess Kyle didn't change any tires, huh? Yes, on he and Michael. He he had stopped during that other caution. Kyle had. Did he? Yeah, and he was really running good. What about Chad and Elliot? They had stopped during that other caution, so they stopped it on this one. Okay. Thank you. So how many laps? In? 97, 94. How many? You know? When? Yeah, we stopped early. We're going to raise the caution. Labonte, Gordon, and others are right behind him. Bill Elliott now is in fifth place. He, too, did not stop here, but three cars have passed him. Ray has an update on Bill Elliott. Ray? Well, Bob, they're telling me down here that everything is really good with Bill Elliott's car. He said it's probably the best car that he's ever had at Bristol. Let's go to John Kernan. Updating you on a couple of the drivers. Jeremy Mayfield took four tires at any chassis in the left rear, the car was just a little bit loose. Mark Martin, four tires, no changes. Jeff Bodine started the race 18th. They took only right side tires. He then moved him all the way up to ninth. They wanted to try and get a little track position early on in this race. You're watching 9th, 10th, and 11th right there. Here is back up front. Rusty Wallace is poised to make a move on Chad Little and will do so in turn number three. You got that fender up alongside, had the preferred groove, the inside groove going into the turn, make pass. And that means when one car goes by, three cars are going by because once you get the 97 up out of the groove, out of the accelerator, lose a little bit of, of momentum, it's simple for the other cars to go by. Now we're about right back where we started, except it's shuffle. Rusty Wallace is now leading, and Terry Labonte is second. And Jeff Gordon has lost a spot to third. We've had three different leaders, three lead changes so far in the first 65 laps of this race. Morgan Shepard, we talked about the word aggression during our open. Well, here's a driver who is being very aggressive, Morgan Shepard. Well, he's debuting for a ride, Bob. <laughs> Ray Mast, he's following the rim to arms forward. Up. Ooh, a little touch. Didn't quite get by. Still racing. They're racing for the 15th and 16th position. Mast has 15th now. Morgan's going to get it. Yep. And here comes Earnhardt on the inside of Kenny Wallace. Red Boat Eyes trying to follow. Earnhardt started 37 and is currently up to 17. Meanwhile, in front of that group is Jeff Bodine. As he leads Jeff Burton and Jeremy Mayfield. Ninth and 10th. Now remember, Jeff Bodine only took on right side tires. But hanging in there pretty good at the moment. My Skinner watches on as he follows Jeremy Mayfield. My Skinner right now is running in the 12th spot. Check out the upper left box. You see where the Henry cars are running. Second, third, and 29th. Randy LaJoy again substituting for Ricky Craven. Now Jeff Bodine is rooted up out of that bottom groove, so he will lose his spots as Mayfield goes by. Jeff Burton, Mike Skinner. And Johnny Benson is going by as well. But maybe those left side tires are not doing the trick for him here now. 
Jeff Bodine. Drops back to 13. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace has built up a bit of an advantage. It is 83 hundredths of a second. And we check out the speeds. Looks like Terry Labonte. Nope. Make that Ricky Rudd had the fastest lap. I don't think he ran 131. I think he ran 113. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> He ran 131. He did like that gal on TV, that commercial, you know, when they came up to the, uh, <laughs> yeah, 112 something that that jumps over the uh, toll booth. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't work. Too. Yeah, that's a good picture of Bristol. <laughs> As we look at what used to be the back bumper. <laughs> Todd Bodines from Basco Pontiac. We're looking out the back of. Briggs and Stratton on board camera. Todd lost two laps when he came in for repair. Obviously, they didn't complete the entire repair job, but uh, he's out there in 41st position. Two laps down after the incident with Ted Musgrave, he dropped a lap down, and he's in 40th. Now, Todd loses another lap as Rusty Wallace makes another move. Let's go down to the pit area once again. It's not just the cosmetic look of the sheet metal damage on Todd Bodine that's causing him a problem right now. When he had that contact out there on the racetrack, it also messed up the alignment, the toe-in. So the car is a big handful right now. They're hoping to get a caution so they can come in and fix that just to make it a little bit easier on Todd. They know their chances at a top 10 finish today are pretty much gone out the window. They just want to complete all the laps that they can. They would like to fix it to make it a little bit easier on their driver. You can see the wrinkled hood that uh, Todd is looking over. Now here's Mike Skinner and Johnny Benson racing for 10th position. Benson said, I'll look on the outside. Well, yeah, that didn't work too good, so let me try the inside. That worked a lot better. Oh, yeah. Benson moves to the top 10. Johnny Benson was 40th after Daytona in the net in the West Cup point standings has now has moved to 16. There is a peculiar odor in the air and it could be coming from the 40 car. And when you say peculiar odor, he's in the pits. Could be rear gearing. No, they're going under the hood, right? What's going on? Well, Matt, they thought it was the rear end. There was a lot of smoke. They're going to try to get this car cooled down a little bit. All the smoke is coming up from the rear end, but they're not exactly sure what the problem is yet. I think they're looking in the wrong end, yeah. <laughs> well, now they're looking in the back end. Yeah. Sterling has problems. There's no question about that. As Mark Martin now takes third position from Terry Labonte. So it's now Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, and Chad Little hanging in there in fifth position as 85 of the 500 laps here at Bristol have been completed. Past Earnhardt? I don't know. Did, any... Did Brett just pass Earnhardt? Did Brett Bodine just pass Earnhardt? I thought so. Track is not tracking. 
Okay. I don't think well, no. I don't think the forty one had anything to do with it. Unless it just yeah, took some air off the spoiler. Yeah. But that's what you're supposed to do. Back up a little bit. Okay. Correct. And it catches. Mm -hmm. As those radial tires get ripped and they just shoot you right out there. You'd been better off to hit the gas and spin around around. Like they do, do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rusty pit? No. They didn't come in, huh? No. <clears throat> ESPN Speed World is live at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Food City 500. And the fourth caution has stopped our racing for the moment. Came out on lap number 90. And it involved Kenny Irwin made contact with the outside retaining wall up in three and four. And you can see the damage to the car. And it happened on lap number 88. And it all started in the back stretch. These are the cars we're talking about. That's Kenny Irwin on the inside, Steve Grissom on the outside, and going in the corner, it looks like that Irwin trying to get in the corner too hard, and Grissom would take some air off the spoiler. He loses control. When he turned that thing back to the right, Ned, those radial tires hooked up and just sent him running in the wall. They really did. He, if he would have had the presence of mind, of course, uh, I know it's hard to think of everything, but if he could have stood on the gas right before it made that right-hand turn, he might could have spun it around like Jerry Nadeau did a little bit earlier. Ray is with Sterling Marlin. Well, Bob Benny was definitely right. They were looking at the wrong end of the Coors Light number 40. It's definitely rear end gear, huh? Yeah, burning gear up. Uh, water temperature starts races up a little bit. Yeah, he wrecked down there, and I got to get some hard a little bit. It hit it really hard. It. Water temperature is the same, and uh, it's burning gear up. Put one in this morning. Burn it up. Coors Light, ship is running good. Now we're back to green. Yes, indeed. Racing resumes. Rusty Wallace still at the front of the field. Gordon, Martin, Labonte, Terry Labonte, and Chad Little are the top five. Now, Chad Little didn't come in that time either. He had pitted on the very first caution, keeping that track position. He's about to lose a position there, though. Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 car tries to go around the green 97 of Chad Little. Contact between those two. Both cars tail in, kicked out just a little bit as they got loose off the corner. There's still 36 of the 43 cars on the lead lap as we watch this battle for fifth. Ooh, Mayfield got a little bit loose. This from the Pennzoil Copter Cam. It looks like the Jeremy's going to get the job done now. So move him into fifth position. Uh, Jeff Burton, his teammate, pulls in behind Chad Little. He probably will not give him as much trouble as Jeremy Mayfield. And we see Johnny Benson, another teammate in the Cheerios car right behind. Come on, Johnny, make it three abreast here in front of him. Yeah, right. <laughs> A big group of cars here. That's Steve Grissom, Greg Sachs, Bobby Hamilton, Bobby Labonte, Dick Trickle, Daryl Waltrip, and others. And most of these cars made pit stops during this last caution. Bobby Levine was sort of going backwards. His car not handling very well, so he came and made pit stops. So did most of these others, made adjustments on their cars. And they're scrambling to try to get on up towards the front as much as they can, even though right now they're not in jeopardy of running right down. But they know Rusty Wallace is out there running by himself. And with them here racing, that, that he's going to catch them in a hurry. That's 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, 33rd, and on down the line. Can look at the summary. 
Actually, Hutt Strickland, last car in the lead lap. Our Napa Field summary here will show you the points as of now. With Jeff Gordon in third now, Terry Labonte fourth, and Dale Earnhardt fifth in the point standing, showing you new information this year on our field summaries. Besides where they are running at the moment, six through ten in the point standings. As of now, Martin, Jeff Burton, Elliott, Jarrett, and here's 11 through 15. Here's another group of cars that are racing up towards the front. Dale Jarrett and Robert Preston just got around Ernie Irvin. We got a crash here off turn four. Steve Grissom up against the wall. He was running in that big pack of cars that we followed for a while, and he's now up against the outside wall coming onto the front stretch. You knew something had to happen in that crowd, Bob, the way that they were jockeying around and touching each other. Something had to do. Last year, there were a record 20 cautions for 132 laps in this 500 lapper, and already here in the first 105, we have had five. Steve Grissom has the car running again and headed for the pit area. Let's see if we can determine what happened. Well, he's the white 41 on the outside there. Dick Trickle in the car number 90 touches him just a little bit. Doesn't take much. And around he goes and up into the wall. And the leaders are in the pits. Here's John Kernan. Mark Martin pulls into his pit stall. We would anticipate a four-tire change. Not anticipating any chassis adjustments or air pressure adjustments. Mark fairly happy with the car, and uh, they're working on the right side. Now let's go to Bill Weber. Four tires, one round of wedge in the left rear for Rusty Wallace. Right side tires are on. Gordon also has his right side getting his left. The fuel going in. Mayfield heading down pit road. Rusty leaving down the 24, then squeezes the 99 between the 12 and 24, and the rest of the field charges off pit road. Great. Earnhardt's in. Back here at the three-car bill, they're going with a four-tire change. They've taken a right rear rubber out of the car, and Steve Grissom just also came in. But, folks, you got to remember, he was not able to pit that last time because he is sharing a pit stall with Dick Fickle here on the back. Boy, things are really congested here at Bristol. Not only on the racetrack, but also in the pit area. Earnhardt brings the GM Goodrich Service Plus Monte Carlo back onto the racetrack. Riding with Bill Elliott under caution here, who is at the front of the field. Dale Jarrett is back on pit road. Got a problem with the right front there. He got together a little bit with Robert Presley when he made a pass on him. Bill, what's going on there? Yeah, he's had a battle here since the green flag. They are working on that right front fender, trying to pull that sheet metal back up. Dale's going to sneak back out. I imagine he'll be back for another visit. John Kernan. Jeremy Mayfield's crew checking over his tires. A few laps before this caution came out, Jeremy had radioed in the cars, getting very, very loose. I think I may have a tire going down. Haven't had a chance to talk to the crew yet as they check the wear and the temperature across the tires as to the fact that he actually did have a tire going down. But this came at a perfect moment for them to keep them from having to pit under the green flag, change tires, and lose at least a lap. And once again, he is running near his teammate, Rusty Wallace. Jeremy is in ninth position, and Rusty is a back in a moment. DJ hmm. had come from 42nd up to 16th, and now he's back there again. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he was really Third coming fourth. up to yeah, there, he wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He, he really was moving good. But when he and Robert Preston got together coming off of turn four, I saw the smoke boil up. That was about five laps before this caution came out. Earnhardt lost uh, 13 spots that. Yep. Mm. Slav says the first seven cars pitted on lap 90. Mm. Okay. That's why they chose not to pit this mm -hmm. time. It's all those cars we saw racing back there together. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, do it before the green flag comes up. Yeah. The green has just come out a half a lap completed 
Thunder Green. Ted Musgrave got a lap back. He got a great run, and when the green came out, he was there to pass the current leader, Bill Elliott. And Bobby Hamilton also has gotten a lap back. Bobby Hamilton just took the lead from Bill Elliott. Okay. Put the Kodak Film Chevrolet in the lead. The first seven cars pitted on lap 90, so this time they chose to stay on the racetrack. Only about 10 laps on their tires, and to Greg Sachs, the 90 car of Dick Triplett, Darrell Walker, the 18 car of Bob Labonte. Bobby Hamilton's leading his second race of 1998. He led at Rockingham only one lap. Back up front here at Bristol. Here are the Penske teammates once again. Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield. Hut Strickland is there in the eight car. That's the battle for seventh, eighth, and ninth. And we see Strickland, the Circuit City Chevrolet, losing another spot to Jeff Burton. Here comes Jeff Gordon. how the Penske cars are running. Rusty 7th, Jeremy Mayfield in ninth. Rusty, the pole sitter here today and stands to win a lot of money if he can win the race. He'll win the 76 Challenge and also the Winston Leader bonus. Rusty Wallace just passed Darrell Walter. Now he's passing Bobby Labonte. Jeremy Mayfield trying to get by. The one car is Darrell Walter. 7-4, Steve Park. Darrell Walter driver with Dale Earnhardt. That just doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on the great battles that we've had in the past, almost feuds, I guess you would say, and now they're together. A lot of respect for each other, though. Walter has sold his team to T.J. Beverly from Texas, and T.J. wanted to shut the team down for about three months to get reorganized, and Dale Earnhardt wanted a driver for three months while Steve Park recuperates, and so it worked out well for both. Dick Trickle trying to get on the inside of the 98 car, the Ford Apple Valley Ford of Greg Sachs. And here comes Rusty Wallace. Dick Trickle up there in the Heilig Myers car recorded his best career finish here. Last year, he's finished third five times, and his most recent one was last year in this race at night. And Greg Sachs goes uphill just a little bit, gives Trickle the opportunity to get on the inside. Ooh. Rusty said, God, please don't rest in front of me. Yep. Rusty takes advantage of Sachs being high. He goes down on the inside. Jeremy Mayfield also goes by. And here comes Jeff Burton. And Jeff Gordon. I'll tell you what, when you open this gate, every cow in the barn gets out, doesn't <laughs> it? You better believe it. Finally gets back down in line, see what he can do with Bobby Labonte. He's getting pretty racy as well. And Sachs cannot hold the body. He goes by. Mark Martin will go by. Check out. Tabasco to Leonard, we see Mark Martin that time when he turned 8,900 RPMs. That's about right. Down the back track, 88, 8, 9,000 RPM. Wow. 125 miles an hour. Down just below 100 in the corners. Here is Mark taking the uh, eighth position away from Bobby Labonte. Watch how quicker that thing accelerates down the straightaway. Down to 73, 7,200 in the middle of the corner. And it'll build to 9,000 almost before you have to back off the throttle and hit the brakes again. And they do use brakes here at Crystal, a lot of brakes. All these cars have brake coaches all over.
over, trying to get some cool air in his brakes. And Rusty Wallace going by, triple for third spot. Don't use the brakes there nearly as much as they do at Martinsville, but they do use them. Yes, they do. They use the, the Martinsville brakes and, as I said, some air scoops to Closing in on Bill Elliott, who is running second. You don't, and, not anymore. <laughs> no, no battle there as Rusty takes second position. Now sets his sights on Bobby Hamilton, who continues to lead. Hamilton has about a 240 second lead. And Hamilton's car, the Kodak Film Show that's leading the race early on in the race, was just terrible. But they made some serious changes on that car, and it's pretty doggone good right now. Bobby Hamilton's best finish this year was at Rockingham, where he finished ninth. His best finish here at Bristol of fourth in this race, 1995. Everybody celebrating the 50th birthday of NASCAR. We have the Food City 500 live for you today here from Bristol Motor Speedway, and we'll have more in a moment. Take breaks, Neil. <laughs> How do you know, though? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, this pit strategy is really something today. Mm -hmm. This is really yep. Get that track position. The last time Earnhardt was 14th before the caution, came out 28th. Now he was 30th, started fourth. Mm -hmm. 23 was 15th. He started 34th. Once again, you can see from the Pennzoil Copter Cam that this field is under reduced speed. We are under caution again here for another crash. And this one occurring in the Food City 500 on lap number 132. Go down the corner. It's going to be Greg Sachs, and I'm trying to, there he is, right in front of Morgan Shepard. Might have uh, gotten a little bit of help there as they jammed up going into that corner. He spins to the outside, then comes back down across the track. Very fortunate that no one else hit him. There he is going up, tags the wall. And Ooh, Kenny Wallace made a bonsai move to the bottom of the track to miss him. Let's ride along with him. Something you definitely don't want to see is a race car in front of your windshield. 
Well, you can jump on your computer and dial up the website of NASCAR, www.nascar.com, and you can help celebrate NASCAR's 50th by voting for the driver that you think is going to carry the torch into the new millennium. The future NASCAR Legend Award will be given one of seven during NASCAR's Night in Hollywood, a golden celebration. Folks, this is going to be fun, and we urge you to join us Saturday, May the 2nd at 8 o'clock Eastern Time for NASCAR's Night in Hollywood. We'll be there, of course, for the California 500, and we'll also rub elbows and hobnob with the Hollywood stars. It's going to be fun. Here's Bill Weber. Updating a couple of guys that have struggled so far today. Bobby Labonte has been on pit road during this caution period. He got four tires and a major chassis adjustment. His car continues to be very ill handling. This time it's the said it was very, very loose. Dale Jarrett has also battled throughout the afternoon. He went to the back after that flat tire, worked his way back up, then got hooked up with Robert Presley, dropped the right front fender again. His problem also is the fact that he was flagged for two fast down pit roads, so he had to start at the tail end of the longest line. His car doesn't look that good, but it's running pretty good. So if he can put those problems behind him, DJ's got a shot here. Here's Ray Dunlap. Well, Bill, here on the back stretch, there is a couple of cars came into pit and one of significance that didn't. That's Bobby Hamilton. Go, 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 One lap down. And Mus 36 Musgrave is one lap down. He got a lap back just a moment ago, and he's trying his best to get another one back. He gets by Sterling Marlin. And he wants to get as much distance between him and Marlin as he can before Rusty Wallace. That's Bobby Hamilton driving that car this year. I said Sterling Marlin, didn't I? <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> That's right, it is Bobby Hamilton. Guys wouldn't change the new car. <laughs> Hard to keep up with. Yep. He wants to get as far away from Bobby Hamilton as he can because he feels like Rusty Wallace does have the fastest car. And it does have to be any because he's passing the leader right now. And Jeff Bird goes blowing by. reading the graphic, but uh, when we have that big NASCAR in Hollywood celebration, that's going to be at 7 o'clock on Saturday, May the 2nd, instead of 8 Eastern. Now, Rusty Wallace has passed Bobby Hamilton. Also, Jeremy Mayfield's been able to get by Hamilton. Here comes Jeff Gordon. And Mark Martin. The top six cars. On board with Mark Martin. Running six. Strickland and Jeff Bodine really get into each other. Hutt's running 11. Having himself a good day here so far. And Jeff Bodine wants that spot. And he's running. Hutt Strickland going a little bit higher in the corner than most other cars we're seeing. But it's working for him as long as the other cars are not able to drive underneath him. This is a good run off the corner. Say, open that up down there in case they can jump up under him. Let's get up Morgan Shepard in the 46 car. Uh, Morgan Shepard in the 46 car. <laughs> Bobby Hamilton in the 4 car. Yeah. First time Morgan's ever driven that car. <laughs> Mayfield just moved into second now around or Jeff Burton is in third. Hamilton's gone back to fourth. But remember Hamilton's tires are older than those that are running in 
front of you. Here's Morgan Shepard in the 46 car. Moving around. And he's going to open the door, it would appear. And then Randy LaJoy. Chad Little. There was some pretty heavy contact between Strickland and Jeff Bodine here a few laps ago on the straightaway. Yeah, as they come up. But we saw we saw the tire smoke and <laughs> and the seven car, the right front, almost came off the ground when they made that contact. <laughs> wow. Apparently his right front rode up on the left rear when the rubber got together. Sheet metal won't necessarily cause you to do that, but that rubber gets together, those wheels that are causing them to come off the ground. And Hus Trickle is about to lose another spot as and Mark Martin's going by Jeff Gordon, taking over the fifth spot. Mark Martin has worked on his car and got it very fast. have the drivers who are running first and second in the point standing. Oh, and the just gets back one in the corner and, and oh, oh no. Kenny yeah, they brought him to him. Broadsided him. We saw Kenny dodge the car just a moment ago of Greg Sachs. This time he could not dodge Cut Strickland. Wow, that was hard impact. And the seventh caution flag waves on lap 157. Both of those guys were having good days, and both of them needed to have good days. Well, Kenny has recorded two top ten finishes in the two most recent races, but he will not get that today. Here's a replay. Well, let's see. Brett Bodine in the white 11 makes a little bit of contact with Hutt Strickland, and Hutt just can't get her back under control. Finally gets away from him, and around he goes. Other cars go by on the inside. Kenny Wallace sort of pinned up there, but he couldn't go down. He's hoping the eight car would come down, but it didn't. It came right in front of him. You're always concerned when you have a bang like that in the driver's car. Watch this for Kenny Wallace's own board. Mm. Yeah, it's all about the race car, and he's right. It's killed. Another caution, another crash here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Rusty Wallace leads back after these messages. Want to do Jerry uh, soon? Never could get it back in the control, could he? Wow, I hope Hutt's okay. He mm -hmm. it sure was. They appear to be talking to him. Is Kenny out of his car? I guess he is. Did Kenny get out of his car? He okay, did. good. Rudd's got a lot of Thanks stuff hanging off of his car. Okay. The pin car's got a lot of sheet metal hanging off the right front of his car. Right foot, yeah. yeah. Was he going under impact? 60, 50, 60 miles an hour. No, probably faster than that. Think I so. think, yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 
Eight. Yeah. Cleanup continues down in turn number one. The good news is that Hut Strickland did get out of the car and he walked to the ambulance. He was favoring his right foot a little bit, but at least he was able to walk to the ambulance. And that is very, very good news because this was a hard impact, not only with the wall, but then with Kenny Wallace. It all happened on lap 156. Hut comes off the corner, as Ned said just a moment ago, gets a little tap from Brett Bodine, the 11 car, right in the left rear, just enough. Hut almost saved it. He's going straight, but then he back and forth, back and forth, and all of a sudden it just totally away. He goes up the racetrack, backs it in the fence. Not a lot of damage there, but here comes Kenny Walsh. He cannot stop. He's got the brakes locked up. You see that the tire smoking as Kenny Walsh is trying to stop, just could not stop. From the Pennzoil copter cam overhead, there's the initial impact with the wall and then the T-bone that he gets from Kenny Wallace. Now the onboard camera from Kenny Wallace. You know, Jerry Punch did a track back, I think it was in Atlanta, where he showed the chassis on this underneath the sheet metal. And we showed just how strong those cars are. And you can see just how strong they are. Because he, the 81 car, Kenny Wallace, hits Hut Strickland's car with a tremendous blow. But the chassis of the roll cage stays intact and does not bend a great deal. There are a lot of roll bars that are mandatory by NASCAR built out welded out into the door to protect the driver of course that's an area that you don't want it to absorb the energy you want it to hold up and it did right there where we saw the front of Wallace's car really crushed but you know it that crush in front of it absorbed part of that energy well Benny mentioned Jerry Punch and as you undoubtedly know by now Jerry is not with us on the telecast today yesterday his mother Betty Jo passed away Jerry, our thoughts are with you, and I know that race fans everywhere join with us in expressing our sincerest condolences. God bless you. Under caution, let's take a break from the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway, 162 of the 500 laps completed. Copter Cam is showing you Bristol Motor Speedway in all of its glory. 130,000 seats and every one of them filled for the Food City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race here this afternoon. We're under a seventh caution of the afternoon. An accident down in turn number one between Hut Strickland and Kenny Wallace. We had some pit stops while we were away. Let's show you what happened. Well, we almost had a bang if we see the cars coming in. Rusty Wallace, the leader. Jeremy Mayfield, the 12, is in second. 99, Jeff Burns is in third. See all the cars making their pit stops. See how Jared Bobby Devon just now getting to their pit, as well as Jared Cope. And the gum out. 
And I think we're going to see Bobby Labonte. He's in the, in the green car back there. I think we're going to see him on the take on two tires. See, he's backing up there already. He's getting finished. He comes down pit road. And Jeff Burton coming out of his pits. And they make a little bit of contact. Indeed, Bobby Labonte totally took on two tires, but it, of course, has gained him a considerable amount of track position. Bill, meanwhile, has an update on the 88 of Dale Jarrett. Well, we told you not to count Dale Jarrett out, and I just talked to Todd Parrott. Those were his exact words. A pit stop of 19 and a half seconds, and Jarrett, who was at the tail end of this field, not too many laps to go, is now threatening to climb into the top ten. Back to the back pit and Ray Dunlap. Well, Bobby Hamilton came in in the Kodak Chevrolet, guys. He had a top five car, and he said this car is awesome. He loves it. But, again, we got to talk about that disadvantage of pitting back here on the backstretch. He came in in the top five, went out, running 20th. Wow. He's running fourth, but he came in the pits, is now running 20th. Kevin LePage go, go, is the go, blue go, car go, at the bottom of the track, go, go, go. trying to gain a lap back. Didn't get the job done, though. Ken Schrader is the leader of this race with Kurt Urban running in second spot, then Bill Elliott, Dick Trickle, and Ward Burton. Neither of those five drivers pitted during this caution, Bob. Here's Ernie Urban taking the lead away from Ken Schrader. Rudd was slightly involved in that accident down there in turn one between Hutt Strickland and Kenny Wallace. Here's a Napa Field summary. The points as of now. Bill Elliott goes to third in the point standings if they were awarded now. See, Ward Burton has lost some spots as Rusty Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield, Jeff Gordon able to get by. And Bill Elliott still struggling trying to get by Kevin LePage. track of the point standings as we show them to you all afternoon you will see very graphically how important track position is because if you move up one position you get a few more points and that may move you a spot higher in the overall standings see Jeff Gord got was able to get by Jeremy Mayfield we have the Penske cars running nose to tail and now Gordon has placed his car between the two Rookie points show Kenny Irwin still in the lead. However, he is 42nd today, and Jerry Nadeau is 43rd. This is the first race that Ernie Irvin has led this year in the Skittles Pontiac. So, Ernie, way to go. Last time he led a race was in Atlanta in the final event of 1997. That, of course, was with a different team. He was driving the Robert Gates then. He's had some good runs this year, including in the Daytona 500. Looks like they got that Skittles Pontiac working pretty well right now. Ray Dunlap has more on Ernie. Well, Bob, the last time the Skittles Pontiac came down pit road, their right front tire changer, Mike Kluka, burned his arm really bad. They've got it all bandaged up, and the group chief, Ryan Pemberton, said, man, you better go to the hospital. He said, no way, we're leading. <laughs> Tell you what, those guys down there are a tough breed. Wow. A big gaggle of cars here. Burton, Jarrett, LePage, Ham uh, Hamilton, Jeff Bodine. Kevin LePage is a lap down to the 91. It's 33rd. Meanwhile, Ward Burton is where? He's in 17th, looks like. That is correct. Back to 18. Still Jerry goes by. Here comes. I'm really impressed with a couple of cars. They Bobby Hamilton's car early on struggled. They made some changes, and he is running so well. And we see Rusty Wallace. He has closed the interval from his position of third. He's about to take second from Ken Schrader. Does so, but look at that interval. He's chopped from a second and a half down to eight tenths of a second in five laps. You can see that 16.9, that's the lap that he passed someone, and the other lap, 16.4, that's in clean racetrack. And of course, he has the fresher tires. 
which can make a big difference. And we keep talking about 15 seconds last year at Bristol, and you, we showed you there. And we see Jeremy Mayfield trying to get back by Jeff Gordon to take over fourth, and he almost Ooh. made it. Slipped a little bit, but still made it. And now Terry Labonte moving around Gordon. Hendrick teammates running real on the track. Terry taking over the fifth spot, put Jeff back to sixth. Again, we keep talking about 15 second laps. We showed you that the lap here is 16, a little over 16 seconds. Well, when the tires are, when they take the qualifying package off and put the tires in a few laps on, they will slow down about a second. That's the reason for the 16 and a half second laps. So Jeff Burke goes by the Dick Trickle, moves in, moves in in the ninth spot. Bill Elliott, the eighth place car, looks back at Burke. It goes up the hill, and that opens the door for Jeff Burton to take away eight spots. And Rusty, meanwhile, is challenging Ernie Irvin for the lead, and Rusty will get the lead. Ernie now follows him back into the turn, but he knows that Rusty is faster right now. At the 11th lead change on the race, in 41 short track races since Richmond in the fall of 92, look at the impressive statistics that accompany Rusty Wallace. 36 top 10s. He has finished in the top 10 88% of the time. His teammate Jeremy Mayfield continues to march forward. He takes third place from Ken Schrader, and Schrader drops back to fifth as Terry Labonte is also able to get to the inside of him. 186 laps are completed on a beautiful blue sky sunny day in Bristol, Tennessee. Something's up with Earnhardt. Uh, Kyle, yeah, Kyle Petty and David Green just passed him. That is correct. Well, I always mention it verbally. I, I do so with the IRL and I do so with CART. And according to uh, the big blue line last night, Adrian Fernandez run in one in Japan yesterday. Is that correct? <laughs> ESPN presents the Food City 500 live from Bristol Motor Speedway and it's being brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. For what you drive and the way you drive it, the choice is clear. By the nice people at Red Roof Inn. Over 260 locations nationwide offering honest value every day. And by Everstart Batteries and Walmart, it all starts here. Next Sunday, it's the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach as the CART FedEx Championship Series resumes. It's at 4 o'clock Eastern Time next Sunday. Of course, the drivers have been in Japan this weekend. Adrian Fernandez taking the checkered flag there yesterday. They'll be back in the U.S. at Long Beach next Sunday here on ESPN. Caution is out once again. And that's the reason you see the ambulance. It's, it has, there's no tunnel here. It's got to go across the racetrack to get outside. John Kernan, where are they going? 
And inside the ambulance is Hut Strickland. You saw the hard crash that he had just a few minutes ago. They've checked him out in the infield care center, uh, loaded him onto a stretcher, put him in the ambulance, taken him to a local hospital for further evaluation. Talked with his crew chief, Jim Long. He said, Hut's uh, okay overall, uh, pretty sore. And Jim says he thinks he may have broken his nose, but uh, Jim said that's uh, as far, that's all he knows about the extent of Hut's injuries. He says they just want to send him to the hospital as a precaution just to make sure that he's not seriously injured. Injured. And here once again is the incident that uh, we're referring to. Hut Strickland and Kenny Wallace. We ride with Kenny. Well, Hut had spun and slid up next to the outside banking, and Kenny Wallace had nowhere to go and came in and hit him right in the door. So the ambulance on the way to the hospital with Hut Strickland as we are near the 200 lap mark here at Bristol. He was just about to go a lap down. He was, hmm, hmm. Rusty was right on his bumper. He'd have got him in the next lap. Wow, look at that. Looks like he's been through a... Hey, a feeny weeny fan. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Man, if that'd be some beanie weenies to coat a cracker, I'd be in business. <laughs> Good. Okay. Bristol is one of the the warm up here, Bobby. <laughs> well, it's getting to be that way. <laughs> Yes. back in. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Ray Dunlap calling the action for you here today. The field is being given the one to go signal. Dale Earnhardt made a quick pit stop. A lot of debris stuck in the grill. I don't know where all that came from. Ray, who's, whose sheet metal was that in the grill of Earnhardt? Well, they're not exactly sure where it came from, Benny, but they know they need to fix it. So they pulled some of those pieces out, put a little tape bandage on there, and got Dale back out. Now, he had come in whenever they opened up pit road, so that was actually his second stop. Other drivers to come in include Michael Waltrip, Jimmy Spencer, Bill and Ward Burton here on the backstretch. Back to racing as Rusty Wallace has the advantage over Ernie Urban. Talking about Earnhardt, he was just about to go a lap down when this last caution came out, so that was a break for him. See, Terry Labonte has also been able to get by Jeremy Mayfield. He now is the third place star. Ricky Rudd, their third in line, is nine. Nine laps down in 36. He's got some damage to the front end of that tied machine.
It's just amazing to me the, the difference in the Jeremy Mayfield car this year. The car is just so much better. Jeremy Mayfield is just driving with so much confidence. Uh, it's a good race car. It builds that confidence, doesn't it? It really does. It's a good race driver, and I, I assume that the alliance with Rusty Wallace and the Pinsky organization has been a big plus for them. Here, Labonte tries to take a look on the inside of Ernie Irvin. Can't quite make it. Weber, you got something to say on Jeremy Mayfield? Uh, just what Rusty told me. We talked about it a little bit on Friday, BP, that Jeremy Mayfield has never been a big fan of racing here at Bristol. But when they got here, Rusty said, you watch me. I'm going to show you where you're going to turn into the corner and where you're going to get on the gas. I'm not going to teach you how to drive this place. Rusty did it. Jeremy watched. Came back in and said, I love this place. And it really did. This is one place where relationship is really expected to help that young driver. Well, Mayfield is second in the point standings, and you'll notice we talked a while ago when you saw a field summary about how Bill Elliott was in third position and how every position out there on the track is important. You notice that that time, Bill Elliott had slipped his seventh in the point standings. And look how much Ernie Irvin slipped when he got on the outside there a moment ago as we look at the, the field summary. Ernie was running in second place. He is now all the way back to seventh place. Ford with the advantage here on Chevrolet. In the point standings and they're the rookie points. Steve Park, of course, out of the rookie battle because of the injuries that he suffered at Atlanta. He was here this weekend, wasn't he? I didn't see him. He was here, I believe, on Saturday. Yes, he was. I felt good. He was in very good spirits. Well, that's terrific news. Yep. We talked with him on the phone, of course, last week at uh, Darlington. Here's Johnny Benson, Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, and Mike Skinner. And Jarrett has been in the pit area about as many times as anybody else. However, he's still up there in 12 spots. I guarantee he's passed twice as many cars as <laughs> any other car here. Because he started at the back twice, hasn't he? Yes, he has. He went 42nd one time, and the other time got down that they were only 37 cars on the lead lap here in the 11th position from Johnny Benson. But yet, he's back to the race cars. Bobby Labonte tries to follow. Kemp was not quite close enough. Can't do it. Look, his highest has been sixth. His lowest all the way back at the back. Now in 12th spot. On happy hour, during our happy hour show last night, we saw him changing the intake manifold on manifold on Dale Jarrett's car. I asked him this morning what they were trying to do, more power off the corner or on the straightaway, and they said, yeah, they need to get a little bit more off the corner. The reason for that change, and we can see it must be working pretty well, because he's pulled by three four cars away from the 26 car. Consider only short track points in 1997. Dale Jarrett won the short track season last year. Jimmy Spencer heads up the racetrack, and here comes Brett Bodine to the inside. Oh, and Musgrave is sideways and uh, stacks up some cars. He and Kyle Petty touch just a little bit. The only Kyle's got a flat tire. He must have cut that tire when he got it beside of him. Tough break. Kyle's running good. Kyle banged the wall. No, uh, caution is coming out. A tough, tough break for Kyle Petty because he has been running well. He made some contact. With, and when you do that, Dale Jarrett did it earlier. And you see a little contact there. You snap that valve out of the right front. And went that next corner and she wouldn't turn. This is the ninth caution of the afternoon. Here's the replay. Okay, we see Kyle down on the inside of the 16. And they make contact right there. Kyle backs off, lets him get straightened out. But then we'll watch him. Musgrave does get straightened out, go down into the corner, and Kyle's car just simply isn't going to turn. Cut that foul stem yep. right up into the wall. I don't think he hit the wall that hard, though. Let's see if we can see from this angle. There he goes up, and boom. The, t the wheel, the tire hit the wall, and that's the worst thing to hit the, the wall because uh, that can do a lot of damage to the suspension. Here they come, Bill Weber. They tiptoe down pit road. Wallace leading the way. Terry Labonte right behind him. Gordon will dive in behind the two car. Rusty pulls up a little bit further this time to give Gordon a little bit more room. Right side tires and fuel for everyone. No chassis adjustment for Wallace. Gordon 
to get Tapper around a wedge in the right side. Well, around to the left side on all these cars, including Jeremy Mayfield. Jack's underneath, car goes up, tightening the left sides on Russell's car. He's down and away, Terry Devine will follow him. Took a long time on the left front of Jeff Gordon, then it's Mark Martin, followed by Mayfield, Schrader, and another good stop for Dale Sharon. Dick Trickles on the back stretch, here's Ray. Well, he sure is, Bill. Last ball, Dick Trickle finished third here, and they would repeat that. He's got a good run going today. Four tires, they're down and away. And right behind him, Bobby Hamilton also in. They get in and out in a hurry. Comes out, so does Chad Little. As they catch up to the end of the cars that pitted here on the front stretch. Well, 218 laps are in the books here at Bristol. Under our ninth caution of the afternoon with Kyle Petty at the wall in turn one. Well, there's going to be some sunburned people down there. Mm. Yep. They haven't seen this much sun since last July around here. <laughs> How's it, Lynn? Hey, John. Hey, John. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. I wouldn't get this uh, mic too close to you. <laughs> One to go. Sterling is back in the race, huh? What?
Meanwhile, Morgan Shepard was in the green car on the outside. He's trying to find that gritty on the outside. He's still trying to find that gritty on the outside. Last lap speeds. Looks like Terry was the best among the top five. Yep. Just barely over Rusty Wallace. Yep. Coming up on Kevin LePage. LePage, we've seen him a lot today. He's running good. He's a lap down, back in 37th position. Still 30 cars on the lead lap. By the way, Sterling Marlin is back in the race. We uh, have failed to mention that. Sterling was in the pits for about 78 laps, but now is back out there. Change the gear in that Coors Light Chevrolet. Jeff Gordon running fourth. Jimmy Spencer back to fifth. And Rusty Wallace going for the lead. It's Bill Elliott and works by to take the lead. Dale Lamont gets by as well. Did anyone say McDonald's? <laughs> Rusty is in the lead. We have an update from John Kernan on his brother Kenny involved in that heart crash with Hut Strickland. Bob Kenny remains in the infield garrison. I talked to one of his team members and they said basically he is all right. He had the breath knocked out of him and they had the, the position in the care center would just like to, for Kenny to stay there for a few more minutes just to relax, catch his breath, take it easy. But the good news, Kenny is okay. Let's go to the back pits. Ray Dunlap on Kyle Petty. Well, John, they continue to work on the Hot Wheels car, and you notice that they're working on the right front here, and the reason is there is no brake rotor on there. When Kyle made contact, the rotor busted all to pieces, so they've got to replace the entire front section there. They're about to put it on right now. You see the new rotor going on the race car. Kyle, also one of those who has tasted the concrete here at Bristol. Had a tower to go down. Shot him right up in the wall. Jimmy Spencer and Jeremy Mayfield are slugging it out for six spot. Six, seven, eight, nine. We had seven different leaders today. Rusty, Terry, Labonte, Hamilton, Elliott, Irvin, Little, and Schrader. And Labonte is trying to get the lead from Rusty Wallace. We are coming up on the halfway point in 13 more laps. $10,000 up for grabs from Gatorade. And there goes Labonte. He goes right by Rusty Wallace. will put the rooster in the front. Come back to Kellogg's point. <laughs> Rusty Wallace is able to keep his call in the very bottom of the race track. You see Ben here on the bottom of the race track. He's in ninth place, too, after all he's been through today. Look to the inside of Jimmy Spencer in one. He's not going to be in that spot long as he goes by Spencer. Robert Preston in front the Jasper Engine Ford. Running in 10th place now. Here's the first plus financial field summary showing the points as of now. And Elliott was in third earlier and most recently in seventh. Now he's up to fifth. We're just showing you how the points change during the race and how important every position is. Rusty wants the Gatorade money again. <laughs> Here he comes down on the inside of Terry Labonte. And you probably right. Someone told Rusty. Hey, Rusty, they paid $10,000 in 10 laps. Don't you get back up there and get that money. So, and I mentioned, I mentioned earlier about how much Rusty can win here today if he does come out uh, first. He'll win the purse, of course. He'll win a couple of bonuses also from uh, the 76 Racing Challenge and the Winston Leader bonus. He'll come out of here with uh, somewhere around a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Not bad for a short track, is it? <laughs> Not at all. We always talk about what the advantage that new tires have over the older tires. We'll show you. Rusty Wallace has changed tires. Bill Elliott has not. Rusty Wallace went 17.063. Elliott 
17-408, a difference of a third, a little more than a third of a second. And what does that do over the course of five laps? Take, for instance, laps 238, 242. And you can see that Rusty Wallace went from 1.6 seconds to 2.8 seconds in front of Bill Elliott. And look at Rusty, 16.83 straight left. Now, folks, that's what you're looking for. That's what a great test will do. That consistent, every lap the same. This completes lap 247. We're three away from the halfway point. There's the 94 car of Bill Elliott, who on those older tires has slipped back to fifth position. He's about three and a half seconds behind Rusty, who leads by about four tenths of a second over Terry Labonte. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sure did. Yep, sure did. Good. Oh, Earnhardt is so loose he came off the corner. And he just about back to just about spun out. And he's about to get lapped in too. Hmm. Oh, my gosh. They got an oiling problem back there then. A greasing problem. Rusty got the halfway money. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> On the edge. Man, oh man. Save that. Good boy. manicured Bristol Motor Speedway reminding us that 1998 is the 50th anniversary for the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. On their website www.nascar.com you can vote for the driver you think will carry the torch for NASCAR into the new millennium. It will be one of seven awards given during NASCAR's night in Hollywood, May the 2nd, Saturday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. It's going to be a grand gala celebration, and we urge you to be with us on Saturday night, May the 2nd, as we spend the evening with the celebrities in Hollywood. And we're spending the day with 130,000 of our closest friends. Hey, folks, welcome to Bristol, and look at this Half Mile Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. It was a gorgeous sight. It really is. You know, we've been coming here for many years, and, and I think that one of the things that I first think of when I think of Bristol is the enthusiasm that the fans always come here with. And the community. We were yep. at a function Friday night, and it's amazing what, how, how the community loves this facility. Over $100,000 was raised for the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of Bristol and Girls Inc. And then Bruton Smith, the owner of this racetrack, matched that with another $100,000. All right, there's Rusty Wallace, the leader, and right behind him is Terry Lamani running in second spot. Running in third. Our third place runner is now Jeff Gordon. And he started in second place. Not too far behind. Mark Martin's been able to work on his car, and he's got his car a lot better than when the race started. Fourth place car. And then the 12th car of Jeremy Mayfield is the next car in line. He's running in sixth place, about 2.9 seconds behind the leader. Started 10th. Schrader's in sixth, and Dale Jarrett is in the seventh spot. That was Schrader. Started 14th spot. Good run for Kenny Schrader. CJ, and as I said, we all stated he's passed more cars than anybody today. That's how it 
was that he started seventh. Well, he's gone to the back. It's got had a flat tire right off the bat. Bill Elliott is the next place. Go see Steve Christopher. He's a lap down in the Antonio car. And Bill Elliott and Robert Preston about in them. Yeah, Bill's been out there a while on those tires in the McDonald's Ford. Robert Presley, as we said earlier, has been running good all day, having a great run here. And ninth position is trying to take over eighth from Elliott. There's Bobby Labonte right behind him in the interstate battery is Pontiac as Robert Presley gets the position on Elliott. And Bobby Labonte has been battling a handling problem, but back in the top ten now, about to take over the ninth position from Bill Elliott. led 17 laps of this race on two different occasions, but now has to back to the 10th spot. Rusty, of course, has led the most laps so far, 141. And Brandon and Joy giving a good ride to the Budweiser Chevrolet, but as we watch him, Michael Walter gets by, takes that spot away, put Michael in the left, and Brandon and Joy back in 12th. Both those drivers needed good runs and are having good runs. Michael Walker been a backup car. He crashed here in practice on Friday. He had to go to a backup car, but looks like that sit go forward doing okay for him. And Martin now about to take over third from Jeff Gordon. And now the sun is ready to come this, this is the time for the crews become concerned about their car. Is the chassis going to be good enough? Because as the sun starts coming down, gets directly overhead, this racetrack is going to be as slick as it has been for a long, long time. This is probably the warmest spring race we've had in a long time. Now, it's warmer in August, but when, it, when the sun goes down in August, the racetrack gets some of that adhesion back. Today, that sun will take all the adhesion away. Once again, we're watching the Tabasco Hot Zone telemetry. 124 mile per hour maximum. It goes down to 97 mile per hour in the corners. He accelerates from up to 9,000, almost 9,100 RPMs. Remember those numbers will jump on board the 35 car of Todd Bodine and uh, we'll compare. I see it goes down straight away, 100 and just up to 109 miles per hour. So he was 15 miles per hour slower down the straightaway than Mark Martin. He has a badly damaged front end, as you can see, a tangle earlier with Ted Musgrave resulted in the body damage. Was that Rick Mass that just Yes. Fine? As, as brother Brett Bodine goes by, deciding who should have the 18th spot. And Bobby Hamilton takes it. And we see the Tabasco car right in front of these two. We know the front end of Todd Bodine's car is damaged. If we look out the back, we see that the rear end is damaged. Bodine is not having a whole lot of fun right now because driving a race car is fun when you're competing and racing with someone. He's out there making laps on a racetrack that's as tough as Bristol. He's having a hard time of it. I don't think we mentioned it, but Rusty Wallace did win the halfway money, $10,000. The Gatorade money? Yep. Those two Rusty. Dale Earnhardt is struggling here this afternoon. He lost a lap. A little bit earlier, now he is four laps down in 33rd. Well, he made a, call, a pit stop just a few moments ago and made some kind of change. To try to make a great gun lap to tell us what they did. Well, I sure can, Benny. You know, when we listen to the radios all the time, we hear the drivers saying, boy, it's a little tight or it's a little bit loose. Well, Earnhardt kept saying, loose, loose, loose. But he wasn't talking about the race car. He was talking about the right rear tire. It actually was about to come off, so they had to pit under green. And you know how devastating that be here at Bristol. Man. Sure can. There is Mike Skinner 
being lapped by Rusty Wallace. Mike Skinner qualified in fourth spot, but now he's back where Ned 26, 26 spots. There are now 25 cars on the lead lap, which is a lot after 280 laps. On board with Mike Skinner. As we see Rusty about to put a lap on David Green, who is running in 25th spot. And he does do that. Terry Labonte continuing to pace. Here comes Mark Martin. Getting closer and closer. Just a car length behind Terry Labonte now. This is a roof camera on top of the Valvoline Ford. As we see Todd Bodine up high. So the top five are Ford, Chevy, Ford, Chevy, Ford. Chevy has won the last four spring races here, and Ford has won the last four of five races at night in the fall here at Bristol. Wallace, Labonte, Martin, Gordon, and Mayfield, your top five at the end of 283 laps. How's Walter doing? 20 he just went, yeah, he went a lap down here a little, little while ago. Morgan about to go a lap down. He's fought the fight pretty good. Yeah. Yep, he sure has. But as this racetrack starts getting slick, he starts yep. sliding. DJ's caught Mayfield. He really is running well. Yeah, he's running good. This car hanging on the bottom pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. of the Food City 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway here in Tennessee. Rusty Wallace continues to lead over Terry Labonte and Mark Martin. See Morgan Shepard in the first Union Chevrolet has gone a lap down to Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte, Mark Martin is a, that's the second, third place car. We see Jeff Gordon is in fourth. Morgan held on for quite a while through 294 laps but has gone a lap down in 24th. 23 cars on the lead lap. Dick Trickle is running in 23rd. Ray Dunlap has a report on the eight car of Hut Strickland. Well, Bob, they've just refired the engine on the eight car. Now, we already know that Hut Strickland left in the ambulance. So the big question is, what are they going to do with this car? Well, they've got a guy that's standing by who's also out of the race, and his name is Kenny Irwin. Kenny said, boy, I 
want to get in there and get every lap I can on this racetrack because I need to learn something. Well, the eight car also needs to get out there because Hutt Strickland has had three finishes worse than 29th this year, and they have not accumulated very many points, so every point is so important. Wow, that's kind of an unusual situation, isn't it? Well, yeah, Kenny, of course, drives the Ford, and, and that's the Chevrolet of Hutt Strickland, but in cases like this, you know, the, the manufacturers normally give their drivers permission to go ahead and, and help out a fellow man. Certainly, it's going to benefit both because yeah. Kenny will be able to get some experience on this track, which will help in the future, and uh, Hutt may be able to uh, move the car up and get some points. Sure. Dick Trick was trying so hard. You know, the unbelievable thing is the eight car still run after the yeah. blow that it took. That's for sure. Trick was trying his best to keep that Heilig Myers Ford in the lead lap. He's done it for about 10 laps, stayed out in front of Rusty. Oh, Rusty's got a run coming here, but he can't do it. Jerry Nagy takes a look at these guys and said, let me follow Rusty Wallace and just see how you get around this racetrack. <laughs> Dick Trickle is also in this race today with a lot on his mind because this past week, his nephew Chris Trickle passed away from injury suffered during a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas, Nevada last year. Of course, we got to know Chris Trickle very well from winter heat out in Tucson, Arizona, where he performed so well. Certainly, our thoughts are with Dick Trickle and the entire Trickle family upon the death of Chris. Budding young race driver whose life was taken from us way too soon. Way, way too soon. He, he really did have some ability, no doubt about that. See, Russ has been able to get by Trickle. Now here goes Labonte. But the whole crowd has caught up. You see there's not only Labonte, the sixth car of, of uh, Mark Martin, Gordon, Mayfield, and Jerry all moved right in now been one of the faster cars on the racetrack for several laps. He came in second that lap that we timed. The fastest was Bobby Labonte. But Jarrett is in sixth position now after many problems. The reason for that is Labonte is a clean racetrack. The rest of these guys are all fighting this traffic, trying to get by. Big trickle. That's one reason that the other that they're not showing the speed that they have. Bill Weber has more on Dale Jarrett's run. Not only catching those cars on the track, but his last pit stop was 17.38 seconds. And the thing DJ has really had a disadvantage with is because he's been further back in the field, say 12 or 15, he gets the pit road that much later. Next time they all did, if it's under caution or green if they've been together, he could pick up a number of spots if they have another likely quick stop like their last one. We'll wait and see. It has been a long battle. We'll wait and see if they get rewarded at the end of the day. Underneath Jeremy Mayfield. Goes to the pit. There's Dale Earnhardt coming up behind him. You said that Earnhardt made a pit stop, made an adjustment, Benny, and that car is really running now. The good range Chevrolet. Of course, he's got much fresher tires, but apparently that adjustment they made is helping him. Dale Jarrett won the race here last fall during the evening. on a lap down to the lead. The next in line is Ernie Irvin. Remember how he led the race here just a few laps ago. Yep. He led 16 laps. And Dusty Wallace is right on his bumper right now. Well, actually, Ernie got around Jeff Bodine, and now Bodine has gone a lap down. And you can see Ernie in the 36 car right in front of the lead. You can check it out as you check, check our first plus financial field summary. The points as of now. Jeff Gordon down to point standings. Elliott six this time. Dale Earnhardt has dropped his seven. Eight. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace of Miller Life Ford trying his best to get around Ernie. Ernie trying to hang on that lead lap. He's running in 20th position. Rusty continuing to add to Ford's dominance.
combination of laps led this year going into this event Ford had led 70 percent of the laps and Rusty is the only driver to have completed all laps so far this season Jeremy Mayfield next best having not uh, completed just one lap and for the rookies are running so most of the rookies have had trouble today I guess Kevin LaFave is the only rookie that hasn't really had any trouble. He was a couple of laps down in 32nd position. Ernie still hanging on out in front of Rusty Wallace. And the field has tightened up once again. One, two, three, four, and five are nose to tail. Well, these cars have four been running around 112 miles per hour. Now they're down to 109 and a half miles per hour as they're all bunched up behind the Skittles Pontiac. We have 183 laps to go. We're at Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. It's the Food City 500. They're the top 10. Back in a moment. Mark just lost. Well, he, yeah, yeah, he's he got very bottled smart up there. Got bottled that. up there, and he said, I don't want to fight this situation. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, DJ. Let's see, that's in three weeks, right? Yeah, okay. When did they all stop on 195? 217. A little over 100. 100 laps. Yep, yep. Thank you, Chevy. Good, Bob. Thank you, sir. Not you. I wouldn't call you sir, Mikey. <laughs> okay. Speed World coverage next after today's race will be in Martinsville, Virginia on Friday, April 17th. Mud Pole qualifying at 3 o'clock on the news. Saturday, a NASCAR Featherlight Modified Tour event at 200 at 2 o'clock on the news. Happy hour at 5.30. And then on Sunday, NASCAR today's at 12.30. And at 1 o'clock, we'll have the Goodies Headache Counter 500. That's April the 19th here on ESPN. Dale Jarrett continues to move up. He's going to take second spot from Terry Labonte. Impressive drive by Jarrett. Oh, really is. Really, really is. Another car on the move is the 18 as Bobby Labonte has come up to sixth and is challenging Jeff. And Bobby has really struggled in the early part of this race, but whatever they did on the last pit stop, they made a major adjustment on it, and it has put that Pontiac on the go. Bill Weber has more on Jeff Gordon, who's currently fifth. 
And he's been dropping back a little bit, and that handle has gone away on that race car. He's loose. Well, Jeff Gordon's car now starting to struggle in the heat of the afternoon, falling back to the fifth position with a loose handling condition. And the medical report on Kenny Wallace, everything has checked out fine. Cut Strickland, the other driver involved in that crash, has been taken to a local hospital for observation. Now they have Jeff Green, who did not qualify for this race, standing by down there to possibly get in the 81 car if they get it ready to uh, go back on the track. Now Jeremy Mayfield back to seventh, and John Kernan has to report. Bob, Jeremy has slipped and lost several positions over the last 30 or 40 laps. Radio Denny told his crew that the car has a push in the middle of the turn. So on their next pit stop, which we should see in about 25 to 30 laps, we'll see them take a wedge out of the car to try and loosen it up a little bit. There's Randy LaJoy running right behind Mayfield. Randy is a lap down in 20th position. Rusty Wallace has clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps this afternoon. So he adds more to his lead in the NASCAR Winston Cup points battle. Here's our Bud Race recap. Rusty leading 212 of the first 335 laps. We have 15 lead changes and nine caution periods for 51 laps. And the average just over 86 miles an hour. Here are the drivers who have led at least one lap. And it's also going to include Chad Little and Ken Schrader. In terms of the attrition, well, we have Cut Strickland and Kenny Wallace off the track. Their cars may be coming back in. The only driver listed as out of the race, the 28 car of Kenny Irwin. John and Randy about to make a pit stop in the STP Pontiac. Jarrett's running about one and three quarter seconds behind Rusty Wallace. He's cut down to about six tenths of a second and he got behind the left cars of Jimmy Spencer. Now, Brett Bodine just moved around him, and that uh, cost him about a second out on the left, out on the race track. Five of Terry Labonte running third. Darrell Waltrip again is driving the number one car and will be doing so for the next two or three months. And the Mike Skinner car is spun up in the corner and caution flag waves. Well, we had green flag pit stops that perhaps were not too far away. And uh, this will give him the opportunity to come in during the caution. The concern is that Dale Jarrett hurt his car when he ran in the back of Mike Skinner's car. That's the concern that we have as we see John Andretti racing Rusty Wallace back to get in the lead. Skinner was very slow going in the third corner, and Jarrett go, and we see the damage to the rear of Skinner's car. Flag that a lot of folks were glad to see. Yep, it was a much came at a much needed time. Mike Skinner came in the pits, but the, the crew said, "Hey, the pit will not open. Go ahead, go back out on the track, and then come back in a little bit later." Here's the replay. The 31 car. I, he might have been slowing to come in the pits, and there we see Jarrett just clipping in the in the rear. And he had some damage to the right front of his car now, and it looks like he has the same amount of damage to the left front. Yep. Well, they come down pit road now. They'll get to check it out. Here's the on board. Now he slowed down. Looks like he, I think he's going in the pit. a pound out of the right rear for Rusty Wallace. Waiting on the left rear. The 88 is away. He's going to be the first one out. Then Rusty, the Terry Labonte, for the 18 and Mayfield, followed by Mark Martin on the front stretch. Burton still sits here, then bits and pulls away. Robert Presley is the top runner on the back stretch, driving the Jasper engines number 77. And let me tell you what, guys, they're having a good run running 12, but they're just glad to be here. The last five races, the 77 team has not even made the race here with guys love driving like
like Bobby Hillen and Morgan Schaefer, and they are down and away to John Kernan. Mark Martin pitted, took on four tires, made a track bar adjustment. The car has been just a little bit tight. Jeremy Mayfield had a really fast pit stop, about 17.8 seconds. They got four tires and made that wedge adjustment in the left rear. Remember, his car had developed a push in the middle of the turn. What happens to Jeff Gordon here during all of this? The incident happens in front of him, and Mark Martin slows down. Jeff Gordon almost runs up on him. We'll see. Right there, boom. And then Bobby Labonte comes down on the inside of Jeff Gordon. And you see Skinner spinning back there. Yep. A piece of debris that someone's got to pick up and get off the racetrack. So ten times the caution has waved so far here at Bristol today. There's a little bit of, what is that? It's me. <laughs> I don't know. It's a piece of debris is what it is. A piece of a race car. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, caution is out once again, and we will take another break. 345 laps completed. Back with more of the Hoot City 500 in a moment. Neil, if, if you want to run that track back, they have the jet dryer on the racetrack. That's the vent can. Vent. It did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 450. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, they're going to blow the track, huh? <clears throat> Mikey. We did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> did want a cold water? Yeah, I'll take one of those. Thank you. Here, Lynn. Bob. I didn't drink much of my there other one, but I will take a cold one. Yeah, it's not real cold, but it's still wet. <clears throat> I think Skinner was trying to come in the pits. Yeah. I mean, he Dale yeah, Jarrett went that corner. He went that corner. Looked like he was running 400 miles an hour past It sure York. did. And he just couldn't or didn't react quick enough. Talk about closing rate. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Hundred and fifty three. They should be able to go the rest of the way from here. Last pit stop? As, as far as fuel is concerned, I would think. They haven't run that far today on a because of Thanks, caution. Bill. Yeah, Todd, Todd told DJ no. And Todd I said they can't. Yeah, and uh the two bunch says uh, no also, but oh, really? uh, okay. but I'll tell you, if you go by the earlier math, they probably could. Hmm. DJ stop was 16.79 seconds. Yeah, I had him that. Track Packs brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. For what you drive and the way you drive it, the choice is clear. Bristol is one of the most demanding stops for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. It's tough on man and machine. And almost every race at Bristol will see at least one car burn up the rear end gear. Well, we have a way to try and help prevent that. Here is the rear end axle assembly. This area is filled with grease, and of course, the gear fits right on here. That's the race configuration. But because of Bristol's high speed and its high banks, when the car turns left, all the centrifugal force sends the grease up through this hollow tube. Here's how we're going to stop that. Benny has an inner axle seal. It's going to sit right here in the neck of this hollow tube. We're going to take the axle, slide it through the tube. It will actually slide through the seal. And it sits here in the tube. So when the car turns left and the grease tries to go right, the seal holds it in place, and that will save your rear end gear. 
And we've already seen rear end gear problems here today with Sterling Marlin. Look at that incredible crowd that's gathered here this afternoon on this beautiful day. 130,000 strong. Pit stop summary. Rusty Wallace was the leader before. Now he's second. Dale Jarrett and Rusty swap places. Terry remains third. Martin from fourth to seventh. Bobby Labonte picks up one spot. So what happened to Jeff Gordon? Well, we'll check on He's that. In fourth. Yeah. Okay. They clean up the track, and we will be back in just a moment with more of the Food City 500. Dale Jarrett, current leader here at this point. What? I'm sorry, guys. I guess Gordon was out of the top five, wasn't he? Yeah, before, yeah. 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 I mean, when he came in the pits, he was out of the top five. Correct. So that's, so he picked up a spot. A couple of spots. Hey, guys. Yeah. FYI, Kenny Irwin is not going to be in the eight car because he's climbed into the seven car. Jeff Bodine uh, kind of overcome with fumes. Yep. Chevy told us. Thank you, John. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that 50th anniversary. Oh, that one. <sighs> the look back. <coughs> Tell you what, DJ has a really good car. Mm -hmm. That didn't mess it up there. Mm-hmm. ESPN salutes the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing as we look back on 50 years of racing and the fastest growing sport in the nation. NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Always the real thing. Always Coca-Cola. I knew that. I thought you did. ESPN salutes the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing as we look back on 50 years of racing and the fastest growing sport in the nation. NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. In the 1990s, the close racing and fast action at Bristol have drawn hundreds of thousands of fans to the mountains of eastern Tennessee. But like NASCAR itself, the Speed Palace had its humble beginnings. In 1961, Larry Carrier, Carl Moore, and R.G. Pope opened the Bristol Motor Speedway on the site of an old dairy farm. A capacity crowd of 18,000 saw Fred Lorenzen win the first Bristol pole and Jack Smith win the first race. The track remained relatively unchanged through the late 70s, but with more TV coverage in the 80s, the sport gained more fans and Bristol needed more seats. 26,000 seats in the early 80s doubled to nearly 55,000 by 1990. And by the time Bruton Smith bought the track in 1996, capacity was 71,000. Perhaps Bristol, more than any other track, best exemplifies the explosion of NASCAR racing across the U.S. Some 135,000 are here now to see NASCAR racing in its 50th season. And they are loving every minute of it here today. We have bright sunshine, beautiful weather, and once again, they're being treated to some great action at Bristol. So I fell in the elevator, uh, elevator of the motel this morning. Uh, he said this was his first live race. He didn't sleep a wink last night. <laughs> <laughs> this shot courtesy of the Pennzoil copter cam flying overhead. When you mentioned elevator, I thought sure you were going to mention the fact that the elevator in which we ride to our broadcast booth, Ned, has been called, been named the Benny Parsons Tower. Isn't it a privilege that? to ride in that thing? Up yes, here? it is. And I tell you, he has arrived. Well, of course, we knew that he was already up there high, but just put him a little higher. <laughs> 
Rusty Wallace currently second. Here's Bill Weber. And just the story on tires and fuel down here. Some guys are concerned that we could see a lot of cautions here in the closing laps. Rusty Wallace was running low on tires, so they went and got some from his brother's team. A set of tires belonging to Kenny Wallace has been added to the supply the two has, so they think they'll have enough. These, of course, are all sticker tires. All about fuel? Well, with less than 150 laps to go, it appears most guys will be able to go to the finish. In fact, I checked with the 88 team and the two team, and both crew chiefs say yes, they can reach the finish without having to stop again. In the 90s here at Bristol, Rusty Wallace has an incredible performance record. Four wins, four second place finishes, and only three times has he finished worse than 15. We're getting set for the restart. We do have a relief driver now. Kenny Irwin is not getting in the uh, eight car. Instead, he is getting in the number seven car. Jeff Bodine has abandoned it because he is ill. Michael Walter Balls are going to made a second pit stop because he isn't feeling well, so they have Justin probably poured some, poured some water on him, trying to get him ready to run the next 150 laps. Michael Glass on the position. Up front, we have Dale Jarrett leading the race, but look at Rusty. Damage now to the front end of Dale Jarrett's car after he clipped Mike Skinner. Terry Labonte now moving up on Rusty. It's a three-car battle for the lead. Labonte going inside of Rusty and taking second place. How about Labonte? Rusty had to slow down. He ran up on Jerry and had to back off. And Labonte had the momentum. Of course, he's had a fast car all day, too. He moved right up there. To ride along with Bill Elliott, McDonald's Ford. He is Bill is in 25th spot a couple of laps down. I think he made a green flag pit stop not long before that caution came out, which really hurt him. John and Brady, we mentioned he made a green flag pit stop, so those that have made those really got hurt for this caution. In that 88 car here at Bristol, Dale Jarrett's record also impressive. A win, two fourths and a sixth. And we mentioned earlier that he was the short track king of 1997. He accumulated more points than any other drivers on short tracks. And short tracks are defined as those smaller than a mile in length. Despite his performance at Martinsville, which has not been good for a couple of years. That's where we'll go next, three weeks time. And Labonte, Terry Labonte takes a look on the inside and he takes a lead. Wow. Now, Rusty Wallace is going to try to do the same thing. DJ's not able to keep his car on the bottom of the racetrack like he was before the last pit stop. Don't know if his car is just better on long runs, Benny, or if maybe a little bit of damage was done when he hit Mike Skinner. Might have knocked the toe in out a little bit or something. Don't know, but his car seems to go better after long runs. Jeff Gordon continues to run in fourth spot. Bobby Lamonti is in fifth. Jeff Gordon also strong on short tracks. Now Rusty closes in on Jarrett again. We're watching this from Randall to Joyce. Budweiser Chevrolet. Rand is in 16th. He's the first car. One lap down. Get the toiletry and the Tabasco hot zone. See the miles per hour and the RPMs. About 9,200 RPM for LaJoy. 122 miles an hour. We got that too. We'll do it again. And what we see DJ still going up in the middle of the corner. And Dustin Wallace is still right on the bottom side. But now LaJoy will have to get away from it. Jeff Gordon in the park car on the you inside. Go, ball, ball Good job. Meanwhile, Terry Labonte has built up almost a second lead on Jarrett and Rusty. Terry is a two-time winner of this race here at Bristol. He won in 84 and in 95. I'm sorry, those that's the uh, second race of the year, the night race. He has never won the spring race here. We all remember him sliding across the finish line and banging the wall in all those victories. And 
now and then as we start to put a few laps on those tires, DJ's car seems to be doing a little bit better against Rusty. Jeremy Mayfield has been fighting back. He's up to six. Mark Martin right behind him in seventh. And we got trouble off turn two. Morgan Shepard does a 360 and keeps going. The oh. caution comes out. The 50 car coming around hard to try to get a lap back. His teammates leading the race, but he's not going to be able to get there in time. Nope. Joy did not quite make it. Let's take a look at it again and see what happened there off corner two. It's Morgan Shepard. There he is coming off the corner. Chad Little and Morgan Shepard. Just a little contact. And Morgan goes around once. Goes around again. Gets it started in the right direction. Puts it in the gear and drives away. Did not hit a thing. How wow. about that? Let's see what Mike Skinner was able to see. So this is the 11th caution of the afternoon. It comes on the 372nd lap. Under reduced speed once again with Terry Labonte now showing the way over Jared Wallace Gordon and Bobby Labonte. Six, 15 cars in the lead lap. Was Musgrave two laps down at one time? I think he was. Now he's in 10th place. I don't know. I know. I'm pretty sure he was two laps down at one time. Yes, that was correct. When, didn't he pass uh, Bobby Hamilton when mm -hmm. Hamilton was leading the race to get that lap back? Or? Yeah, and I thought he passed somebody else one time too. I don't know. He might not. He might have only been one lap down. I'm not sure. But. Okay. What, what was that again, Neil? I'm sorry. Okay. You, you talking about third? You about Terry Labonte? Yeah. Okay. Okay. ESPN Speed World Live today at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Food City 500 being brought to you by Old Milwaukee, America's best tasting beer. By the more than 1,900 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Coming up right after the conclusion of our race, you'll be able to... She's Shop Talk, and the special guest this afternoon is Rusty Wallace, the current points leader in Winston Cup Racing, and the driver was currently third here at Bristol. There's part of the 130-some thousand people here this afternoon. The only car that I saw made a pit stop during this caution that was on the lead lap and pitting on the front was Ken Schrader. Now some others uh, pitted, I guess, on the back stretch. Yeah, Robert Preston pitted, the Michael Walter car, and Bobby Hamilton all pitted. All these cars on the lead lap. John Kernan. I talked to Andy Petrie, the car owner for Kenny Schrader, and asked him why they opted to go ahead and come in. He said that last set of tires, that the car had gotten very, very loose off the corners. So they decided to just come on in, change tires, make an adjustment, and send him back out. And he didn't really lose that much uh, as far as track position. Let's go to the back stretch and read that lap. Well, John, we were talking about Robert Presley. They did pit for four tires. Now, the last set of tires they had on there, they had gone 120 laps on the right side and 160 laps on the left side, so they could make it all the way. We might see Davey Allison all over again. Bill Weber. Jeff Gordon says he's working on his line, thinks he'll be better on the long runs. The 88 crew expects Jarrett to be better on a long run, too. They're into 100 degrees. Terry Labonte 
He got a pretty good jump on that restart. You can see why caution flags freeze caution flags. <laughs> yeah, they get all bunched up with lap cars down on the inside, trying to gain as much as they can and lead lap cars on the outside, trying to get around them. Quarters of a second ahead of Dale Jarrett. Cars on the lead lap. Rusty closes on Jarrett. The eight car, the Circuit City car, is back on the racetrack, and it's Mike Dillon, the driver of that car. Butcher is driver that drives the Detroit Gasket Bush car. And Ernie Irvin is very slow. Has a left rear tire flat. Mm, oh, he sure does. He's made it to his backstretch pit, however. Can we determine what happened here? Yeah, he and Bobby Hamilton right there make some contact, and that just knocks that bounced him off that left rear tire. We've seen it happen several times here today. Ray Dunlap is right there. Well, you're exactly right, Bob. They're going to change the left side tires on the Skittles Pontiac, and what a tough break for Ernie. His last 10 races here at Bristol have been a finish of 16th or worse. They're having a pretty tough day. And Jeff Gordon. Yeah, Jeff Gordon coming up and challenge Rusty. Rusty third, Jeff fourth. Again, you're going to notice on our rundowns that Kenny Irwin is shown twice. Kenny is in for Jeff Bodine in the seventh car. Kenny's car is out of the race. In fact, 43rd last. And Gordon gets around, Rusty. Yep. Goes by, so Rusty Wall struggling right now as we watch the McDonald's Ford on board camera. It is a couple laps down, as Dad told you just a moment ago. Maybe that scheduled pit stop. Could have been scheduled because it had a long green flag run. He decided to come in, but unfortunately got caught because the caution came out right after that. There's Jeremy Mayfield running fifth. Another great run for Jeremy. Bill has more on Rusty Wallace. Well, amongst all this noise, the quietest place in Bristol might be Rusty Wallace's pit. They're very unhappy with the set of tires they have on that car. It's easy to see why. Rusty, who's led a lot of laps today, going the wrong way. They'd love to see a caution, and they'd like to see the rest of the front runners come in. Too. Otherwise, if he would have to pity, give up all that traction. Ernie Urban got off to a good start this season at Daytona, but has continued to slide in the point standings. And you saw, as we saw his name, that he continues to go down. Now Dale Jarrett closing in on Terry Labonte. He's about 1.2 seconds behind about five laps ago. Now it's 0.57 seconds. Terry is in his 575th consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup race. Every time he runs one, he sets a new record, doesn't he? Yep. By the way, Ricky Rudd uh, started his 600 NASCAR Winston Cup race today, not consecutive, but his 600 start. He's the ninth driver in NASCAR Winston Cup history to do so. There are three active drivers uh, at that mark, Marcus and Daryl Waltrip besides Ricky. Set the interval back from the leader. We see that Dale Jarrett is almost seven tenths of a second. The yellow arrows will tell you who was the fastest that last lap. You know, Jeff looked like he was fastest. of a second in the last three laps. 
the body is picked up from 67 up to 72. Bill Weber. Well, it's worse than tires for Rusty Wallace. He may have a problem in the engine compartment. He may have dropped the cylinder. Robin Pemberton just gave you the signal. Something broke. So Rusty drifts high, and the field will go underneath. And these guys are rough. Does not look like Rusty will win from the pole. In fact, he continues to slide further back in the field. Indeed. You know, yesterday afternoon, in happy hour, Rusty Wallace had a miss. Remember that, Bob? Had a, oh, we see Ted Musgrave going by. Here goes Jeff Bird by. Had a miss. They changed spark plugs and said that fixed the problem. Yep, and it has reared its ugly head again. He's now all the way back to 11. What a tough break. Has five top five finishes in the first five races. Still driving it as hard as he can. Some drivers will use a brace for their head. Rusty chooses a strap. Here's a battle for position. Bobby Labonte at 18 and Johnny Benson at 26. I think Mark Martin just moved around Bobby Labonte and took over the fifth position. Look at Roush Racing. They're running wow. sixth, ninth, eighth, tenth, and seventh. All five cars in the top ten. As a matter of fact, the 18th car is the only car in the top ten not connected with a multi-car team. Hmm. 18 car to Joe Gibbs. Interstate back is plenty We broke ground this week on a brand new facility. Major, uh, major facility. 120,000 square feet out of it. Oh, and somebody looks like Morgan Shepard has an engine problem or is smoking down the back stretch. Yeah, he's smoking down the front stretch, too. Tough break as we, as Mark Martin looks back at Bobby Labonte. And Labonte's been able to pull away from uh, the Johnny Benson car. And we see the 46 car that time got very, very loose as it came off the corner. And whatever that oil or smoke is, it probably got out of the wheels and loosened the car up. Tough break for Morgan Shepard. Had a great run going. Not a great run, a good run. Says so great. He comes in the pits and to try to figure out what the smoke is, John Kernan. Morgan Shepard rode slowly into the pits, and it looks like the crew is just going to do a routine four tire change. He saw the smoke was on him very loose. It actually looks like the left rear tire might be just a little bit low, but they changed right sides only, so he must have had a right side tire go flat on him. Morgan moving back out of the racetrack. Meanwhile, there are fewer than 100 laps left. 94 to go. There is the leader, Terry Labonte. He's coming up on some slower traffic ahead. He has about a three-quarters of a second lead over Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, Jeremy Mayfield, and Mark Martin in the top five. Was he? Yeah. I'm trying to figure it. Was he two laps down the line down or one lap? But he has done a great job. Yep. That's right. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. Uh, maybe. Good Bob. Uh, 
what happened to my relief drivers anyway? I forget who's in what car. I guess the seven car is out of the race, huh? Labonte leads the Food City 500 with 417 laps completed. Last year in short track races, he was fifth overall. Terry Labonte was with an average finish of 10th on the short tracks. Now let's go down to the pits and Bill Weber. John Kernan. Well, I've been mistaken for Dr. Jerry Punch, but never Bill Weber, Bob. That's a new one. But let me show you the right rear tire that came off of Morgan Shepard's car. Remember the smoke we saw? The fender was rubbing. Cut a groove all the way around the tire. So it was the right rear tire. A little groove. I mean, in Formula One, what they actually do that on purpose now. But in NASCAR, that's not a good thing to have a groove in your tire. It's like it's perfect all the way around, huh? And I tell you what, it wouldn't have uh, about another lap or so, and that groove would have gone into the air, and uh, Morgan Shepard would have spun out. Morgan is uh, three laps down now, running in 27th position. So that was the smoke that I saw out of the 46 car and not the engine. Boy, you got to give a call to Ted Musgrave. Remember earlier in the race where he ran up on Todd Bodine, that car right in front of him? Yeah. Boy, he has come on very well since then. He dropped at least one lap down and is currently in seventh position on the lead lap. His incident with Todd Bodine happened on lap number 52. They're coming off the second corner. They make contact and watch. As Musgrave goes across the hood of the Tabasco car, and now, as you said, he is in seventh spot. Great comeback effort. And meanwhile, Rusty Wallace is about to get lapped in 15. That problem that he has apparently running on seven cylinders. Well, what a tough break for him. Bill Weber. And he is off the lead lap now. As you see, all he did was radio into his crew that the motor broke. That's all he said, the motor broke. Later on, he told him he believes they dropped a cylinder and a half. So he's got a long 80 laps or so to ride out here trying to protect his points. Rusty was trying to ex extend his five consecutive top five finishes in 1998. You see that Davey Allison had five in 92 and finished third in the championship. Dale Earnhardt had six top five finishes to start the season in 1980 and went on to win the NASCAR Winston Cup. But you see the record there. Cale Yarborough in 74 started the season with nine straight top, top five finishes. Wow. That is strong. It is. And we talked about Robert Presley. He is in 14th position, about to go a lap down. Meanwhile, Jarrett closes in on Terry Labonte once again. He's been inching up ever so close. Traffic has something to do with it a lot of times. <laughs> Presley running 14th now, a lap down. 13 cars on the lead lap. Michael Waltrip, the last car on the lead lap. And he's not far in front of the leader. Here's the 24 car, Jeff Gordon running third, about two seconds behind Terry. Jeff Gordon, 10 races, three wins at Bristol, four top fives and five top tens. But he also has four DNFs because of accidents. There's 
Mark Martin running fourth. About 5.3 seconds behind the leader. Just three seconds behind Jeff Gordon. The next car in front of him was the third place car. And behind Mark Martin will be the car number 12, Jeremy Mayfield. There you see Mark on the left of your screen. There comes the 12 into the picture. He's about six seconds behind the leader. This is his seventh race here at Bristol. One top ten. He finished ninth in last year's spring race. Take a look at the points now. Bonnie, Gordon, and Martin. Third, fourth, and fifth. Might be able to be ever so much closer. Yep. All right, now Terry Labonte comes up on a lot of traffic. There's Michael Waltrip just ahead. So is John Andretti and Jimmy Spencer. Michael Waltrip in 14th in 13th spot. You see that Jared is right there. Where Labonte catches the traffic might make the difference. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose this race? And we have a car up in the wall as Rusty Wallace. Caution is out. John Andretti ran into the back of Jimmy Spencer as Spencer slowed down as he got the caution flag. And a tough day for Wallace. His Miller Lite Ford is damaged in the front end after going up and kissing the concrete. He did the wall pretty good. Yeah, yeah and that has. right front tire is flat now, and that probably is what caused him to get into the wall. He takes just takes the car directly behind the wall. The leaders will be coming into the pits. Watch this, folks, as Rusty Wallace goes down the straightaway. And right there, we see something come out of Ricky Rudd's car. And I guess that he's going to run over this. Watch as there it comes back there out. It comes out. And Rusty Wallace runs over it with the right front tire. And you say sometimes you got to have a little luck. Folks, that was bad luck. And watch as we go directly into the wall. Pit stops occurring, meanwhile. Jeff Gordon gets out first. Out. Yep. Jared second, Terry Labonte third, and Ray Dunlap is in the backstretch. Well, Bob, Ted Musgrave's prime star chorus is a little banged up in the front, but they're going to try to get him back out real quick. Four tires and gas, and he's down and away. Well, look at the replay once again of what happened to Rusty Wallace. There we see Ricky Rudd. I don't know. Can't really see what it was, but it sure cut the tire. We'll do this in real time as we follow Ricky Rudd and listen. <laughs> is back here behind pit wall. You can take a look at the tire that obviously he had tremendous difficulty with. Uh, severely punctured. The right side of the car heavily damaged. Rusty's out of the car. He's declined all interviews. He's very, very disappointed. Uh, he had the engine problem as well. So right now, Rusty out of the car. It's behind the wall. The crew's going to work on it to get him back out. He's definitely racing for points, but it's clear, very clear how disappointed he is. And you sure can't blame him. That is a tough, tough break. Championships are won and lost in situations like this. It's early in the season. Jeremy Mayfield is, as of right now, the points leader in NASCAR Winston Cup competition in 1998. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. Back in a moment. Wow, how about that? Jeremy? You can hear Rusty's car missing on that replay, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, does it come off a of Rudd's car, or did he run over it and kick it yeah. out? I mean, you know, it could come off. E it could be either way. Mm -hmm. Bounces up. It's hard to tell what it is. I, I would guess it's the the with the force that it was bouncing around. I would guess it's a piece of lid. Yeah, it looks pretty solid. 
Yeah, yeah. Brock bounces off the wall and kicks back out there. Hmm. Sixty laps to go. Musgrave lost three spots on that pit stop. Mm -hmm. Did all those guys change four tires in the front? Mm -hmm. Oh, last saw did. Go, 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 go. To the right. briefly and then we had another wreck and it involved a couple of drivers who were in the top 10. Bobby Labonte as you see was involved and so was Chad Little and Mike Skinner. Now we'll take a look at the replays. Here we see Labonte on the outside the 18 car on the outside going in the corner there's Mike Skinner. Looks like they make contact and Skinner gets hit from behind by the 97 car. And now the 18 car is going to all of a sudden as the 31 car comes down the racetrack. Oh, there's a, there's what 36 degree <laughs> banks will do for you. That's right. Look well, that's how slick, slick it is. Wow. Here it is from another angle down. Once again, the green flag, the green card gets tagged from Skinner and then the 97 in the back of the 31 car. And also the 33 car, I don't know if Schrader was involved or not. He was up there high. Looks like he pulls up there and maybe stops. He does pull up yeah. there and stop. I get it. Okay. Has to make a square left. Hmm. Here's the Mike Skinner's in-car camera. <laughs> Bill Weber now is with Rusty Wallace. And Rusty, first of all, I know you're you're really disappointed what happened. Yeah, I am. Now we blew another motor, and uh, it, it lost about. It feels like it almost lost two cylinders out there. I think it was turning only 8,500 RPM real low, and so it went go. It went by, and nothing we can do about that. So then I was just riding it out, trying to get as many points as I could, and we lost a right front tire then. So, man, it all came at once. Blew the motor, then lost the tire, and that's it. It appears through the replay that you may have run over something to puncture that tire. Did you see anything? Uh, no, I didn't, but I'm sure I did because, uh, you know, the car was handling really good. And it, that I, had a, I had a set of tires that really wasn't working the way I wanted it to right there at that last stop. So I was just riding out to the next caution plug to get in and change them. But I had a great car all day long, but I can't believe the motor blew up, man. It's just amazing, but it, uh, it did again. <laughs> You've had the great start to the season. Does this take away from it? Yeah, it does take away from it because I really thought the engine gremlins were gone and uh, it, it came back again. So we're just going to have to stay working on it. We'll make a major change next week and probably carry it on through the rest of the year, to tell you the truth. This is a disappointment to you, but a challenge to your crew to bounce back after yeah. the strong start. Well, I think we got a great car and we're handling really good and I believe we'll bounce back. I'm not concerned about that. 
I don't know how bad we'll get hurt in the points today. I'm sure we'll fall to second. Uh, if anybody gets it, hopefully Jeremy will jump up and get, get the lead for me. But, uh, yeah, it's just too bad because I really thought I could have won this race today. Okay, well, he's still on the points lead right now, but we've got a lot of laps yet to run. Rusty able to smile, but it's clear the disappointment is behind that smile. He thought he was going to win at Bristol again today. He will not win his seventh race at Bristol. Well, the race has been red flagged. You see the car stopped over on the back stretch. Here again is what Rusty ran over. Right there. He either came off of Rudd's car, and of course he cut a tire and into the wall he went, or he could have come off of another car and Rudd kicked it up in front of Rusty. We're not sure about that. And you see on the board there, red flag. There's a lot of debris up there, and there's only 50 laps to go. If It would take 10 or 15 laps under the caution flag, so NASCAR not trying to take the green flag racing away from the fans, said throw the red, let's clean this mess up, and then we'll run our 50 laps. It's very slick up there in that turn, too. Uh, turn also, as we saw Chad Little slide down the banking so they're going to clean everything up get the track back in racing condition and then the final 54 laps of the food city 500. He has his headset off, Mikey. Mikey's trying to talk to you. What? What? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> sure. What time is your flight? Over there, were you in turn three, where you come out of the infield? Hmm. See, huh? it's always depending on those airplanes, Mikey. I'm telling you. Beautiful day, huh? Wait a second, now wait. What do, what do, what do we want? Okay. Okay. Baseball season begins on Tuesday. ESPN's triple header. Three o'clock, Cal Ripken's streak continues as the Orioles host the Royals. At seven o'clock, Kenny Lofton is back with the Indians as they take on Ken Griffey Jr. with the Mariners. And then at 10 o'clock, MVP Larry Walker and the Rockies visit Andy Bennis and the Arizona Diamondbacks in their first game ever. Tuesday, the baseball season is here again. And I love it. And red flag is still out. We see all the cars are gone from up there so it won't be too long till we'll be back trying to figure out who's going to win the food city 500 let's go down to bill weber 446 laps on the board and ray everham your dupont chevy with jeff gordon leads and a great pit stop last time you were here yeah these guys are awesome in the pits and uh, jeff stayed after it all day long you know the car's not really been that great it's not been the strongest car we're a little bit off uh, hopefully this last little tire pressure adjustment that new set of tires uh, can hold off Terry in the 88. Both of them are pretty strong, though. You have chased it all day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we haven't quit working on it. We were up, down. Uh, we've had it loose. We've had it tight. Hopefully, we've got it in between right now. Do you and, think you can hold them off? Uh, I don't know. You know, we're certainly going to try. But uh, if we don't, I just hope it's a good race. You know, Terry's had had the best car, uh, you know, besides Rusty. But So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And, uh, you know, may the best man win. I want to say hi to Rick and Linda watching us home. Okay, that's Ray Everham, crew chief for Jeff Gordon. Now, he could get his fourth straight win here today if he does get to victory lane. An update on a car sitting on the backstretch. That'd be the 99 Exide Ford of Jeff Burton. Some steam billowing from that car earlier after they stopped under the red flag. Crew, their crew chief told me that it is just simply overheating. So they want to get this restarted as quickly as possible. And I don't imagine they're the only ones in that situation. Let's go to John Kernan with Chad Little. Well, Chad, uh, great run going there, uh, looking like a top 10 finish, but uh, what happened? Uh, it looked like the um, 18 car and the 31 car, I think, um, bumped getting into turn three, and I was right behind the 18 car, and it's just one of those deals. We hit hard enough to take out the radiator and got into the 
some of the front drive, so with a few laps that are left, we're probably all done. But I'm really pleased with the John Deere car today and how the team set the cup the, up the car. And, um, you know, we, uh, we've been struggling qualifying, and we'll get a little better starting position. It'll help. But, man, I was, I was tickled to death. And these are the kind of accidents at Bristol that you anticipate, you almost expect. So when they don't happen, you pat yourself on the back. But when they do, you, you just say, well, that's Bristol. And um, if you have a good car, you just um, go on to the next race. How much time when something like that happens? How, how is it a split second to uh, react? Um, or does it slow down in, in your mind? Well, I didn't even have time to hit my brakes before I ran in the back of Bobby. So, and I hit him pretty hard, and then I hit the wall, and then so, uh, you know, sometimes you got time to react. But on a restart, everybody's bunched up so tight. Uh, you know, there's just very little room, and it's kind of a shame because with that few laps to go, the uh, lap car shouldn't have been racing that hard with the leaders, but. But sometimes it's hard to get down too so i'm just real pleased with john deere and, and the car and um can't thank jack roush enough and um it was fun racing with my teammates uh they're always beating us so today it was fun to pass them a little bit i guess the most important question you're okay right yeah i feel fine i was just awful hot so i went in there to sit down and uh get a drink and a couple cool regs all right well that's chad little out of it now but still smiling after having what looked like uh, could have been a top 10 run today Car still stopped over there in the back stretch, and in turn three, they've got the jet blower out there now to blow the debris and uh, other stuff off the track. What what does this do to the mind of, of a driver who has been out there struggling all afternoon, and now suddenly we stop, and before we go the final 50 laps, I would think they probably are. Are looking forward to this because I imagine you're pretty tired right now. Well, Chad Little said he was awfully hot, and you yeah. can rest assured that the rest of them are too. They welcome the break, but at the same time, you you got some momentum going, and you know how the the car is feeling and what your plans are and the strategy and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you hate to see that go out the window. Well, it's been a good race up to this point, as Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Terry Labonte, Jeremy Mayfield, and Mark Martin have the top five spots as we get set to go back to racing. What'd you think, Ned? <laughs> sort of looked that way, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Just did. <laughs> yeah, okay.
And that, folks, is Bristol. <laughs> and it is Bristol. That's all you can say. So now you understand why they, these fellows, we talk about just how tough it is, and, and we talk about Bristol and the things that can go wrong here. Well, they're refiring the cars, so we're about to go back to the green flag. Jimmy Spencer driving down off the banking. Let's review the uh, standings as they are right now. There are 11 cars on the lead lap led by Jeff Gordon. Brett Bodine's having a good run there in 12th position. Randy LaJoy, who recorded his best finish here at Bristol in the NASCAR Winston Cup race, he's 14th. His best finish is 12th. Dick Trickle is a lap down in 15th. There you see 16th through 20th. Jimmy Spencer also one lap down. And then uh, David Green, Ward Burton, Bill Elliott, and Steve Grissom all two laps down. Andretti had made a green flag pit stop, got caught. So there's uh, down to 30th. And 31 to 43, we see Kenny Irwin will have the dubious um, honor. Dubious honor of being the last play star 43rd year this afternoon. And Kenny Wallace had a great run going until he and Strickland, Strickland's fun and Kenny just plowed him as you saw a moment ago. They'll finish 41st and 42nd. Rusty Wallace finishing in 32nd position will undoubtedly lose the points lead here this afternoon. Jeremy Mayfield at the moment is in the points lead, but of course we've got 53 more laps to race. And we will get back to it in just a moment. Boot City 500 from Bristol. Closing laps coming up. Stay with us. See, Rusty's going to finish yeah, farther yeah, back in 32nd. Yeah. yeah, those three cars there, if they yeah. keep running, will pass him, yeah. so he'll finish 35th instead yeah. of 32nd. I don't know why Brett and the 77 car had to stop over there. Well, I know they passed the leaders, but but I thought they had hey to guys. back in. On, on the 77 and the 11, they're both arguing with NASCAR that they should be back on the lead lap because Gordon actually had not taken the yellow, and NASCAR said, no, you're a lap down, so that's why they held him. Hmm. Okay. And, and I think Gordon did get the, the uh, yellow when he came across. It was close, but I'm pretty sure he did. Schrader's back in. We don't have anything else to show. Show how he got the lead. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Okie dokie. What time we go up there? Four thirty. <laughs> Overhead shot once again of Bristol Motor Speedway as the pace car has field in tow just about ready to go back to green flag racing 450 laps have been completed 50 to go Jeff Gordon is in the lead he came out of the pits during the most recent round of pit stops and got the lead let's show you how he did it here we see he's coming in in third spot it's Labonte Jarrett and then Jeff Gordon M Mark Martin is in fourth spot Jeremy Mayfield in fifth they all come to stop they're all in, changing tires. Jeff Gordon stops. Right side is up. Right side is on. Right side is down. About the same time as Terry Labonte. Dale Jarrett's back working on his left side. Clean the windshield on Gordon's car. Jarrett moves, but Gordon moves as well and takes the lead as Dale Jarrett second, Terry Labonte in third. Another great work by a uh, piece of work from the Rainbow Warriors to get Jeff out first. We're going to go back to green next time around. 48 laps to go when the green flag is waved. 11 cars on the lead lap. Enzo 
well. Copter cam showing you that uh, now part of the back stretch in the third turn will be engulfed in shadows for the remainder of the race. Off of corner four, here we go. Joy was able to get between the first and second place car. And right now, Dale Jarrett has been pressured hard by Terry Labonte for that second spot. Jarrett starts in the first few laps, just does not go too good. He didn't do it when they put new tires on before. Labonte's going to get the spot. Yes, he has got a good run off that fourth corner, kind of diamond corner up there in four and has taken second place from Dan Jarrett. The Hendrick cars are first and second. And the other Hendrick car is there between them, although Randy LaJoy is a lap down in 12th position. The conference should come out. I wouldn't be surprised if he wouldn't get back in the big lap. He's running good. Terry Labonte competing in his 39th race here. Finished second in this spring race in 84 and 96. Has won the fall race twice. Jeff Gordon, meanwhile, going for his fourth straight win in this spring event. John Kerner. Bob, it's only fitting that Randy LaJoy is running in the spot he is right now on the racetrack between the two other Hendrick cars. Randy, when he, they unloaded the car, just did not feel comfortable to him. He and his team tried and tried to get that comfort level there, but no, they couldn't find it. So this morning, what they decided to do was take part of Jeff Gordon's setup, put it on the car, take part of Terry Labonte's setup, and put it on the car. So it's a combination of the 24 and the 5 car setup on that 50 car. So that's pretty cool that he's uh, in between them, except for now Terry is past him. Dale Jarrett is being worked on now by Jeremy Mayfield. And Jimmy Spencer spins down the back stretch as we see it, and no caution. But boy, there's so much smoke back there that I don't know how anybody can see through. And Gordon slows down, and there is no caution. And everybody else is slowing down. The other leaders are slowing down, too. The spotters should tell them, come on, guys, there is no caution. Now they get the word. Well, it certainly has allowed Terry Labonte to close in on Jeff Gordon. There was so much smoke in the backstretch. Some of the cars, I think, almost had to stop over there. There was zero visibility. The cars behind Jimmy Spencer, in fact, some of them did stop because there was. If we take a look, watch as Spencer goes around. He nails that thing. And look at the smoke, folks. Man. <laughs> and there he makes some contact with a 46 car when he gets going again. Okay, now back to live action. Jimmy Spencer in 12th spot, a lap down causing the commotion back there, but no caution. And now Jeff Gordon's for his teammate Terry Labonte is only a half second. Yeah, Labonte is definitely picking up on him. Ray Emmerham said, Bill Weber talked to him just a moment ago, and he said Terry Labonte next to Rusty Wallace had the best car all day. He has been very, very good, although he lost 800 for the second day. Yeah. And we were about to see Jeremy Mayfield try to make a move on Dale Jarrett there when the incident occurred. And now there's a little bit of racetrack between those two, but Jarrett holding on to third spot. And Johnny Benson has passed Mark Martin to move into fifth spot. From the Pennzoil copter cam, there is the separation between first and second. As the laps continue to click off when they hit the line, there will be 33 laps to go. Jeff Gordon is continuing now to pull away a bit from Terry Labonte. The interval now up to three quarters of a second. Hmm. I think Spencer in the four car made contact. Didn't he? And maybe the four car had to go in the pits. Maybe he had a flat tire or something. Did the four car just pick him up? Yeah, okay. Card number. Mm. 
pass catcher is loose, eh? Mm. Well, I don't find it. to go in the Food City 500 from Bristol, Tennessee, and Tennessee is also in the spotlight tonight at 8.30 on ESPN as the number one rated Tennessee Lady Vols go to the championship game of the NCAA Women's Tournament against the Louisiana Tech Lady Texters. 8.30 tonight on ESPN, the championship game of the Women's NCAA Basketball Tournament. Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte running first and second. And the interval now begins to shrink considerably down to a third of a second for, for Jeff over Terry. And they're coming up on some heavy lap traffic, Bob. They've been in so much for the last while. There's about seven cars in front of them there now that they'll have to contend with, even though they're running in single file. It still slows down. It slows them down. Ricky Rudd moves totally out of the way. Let's them go. We just got some great news from the local hospital. Hutt Strickland has been released. They x-rayed him and did all kinds of other tests, and they say, Hutt, you're fine. Go home. Oh, that's that, great. That is Good. great news. He took a hard lick, and he beat the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a positive, I guess that's it. <laughs> 22 laps to go. Let's check the intervals. About half second now. One and three quarter second advantage over Jarrett. The fastest lap was by Dale Jarrett. He might be out of time though because we see the second and three quarters back. And it takes some time for his car to get going. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Five car closed in a bit that time. He passes Lake Speed. Todd go down the Tabasco car. Let's the leader go by. with Todd Bodine, who is 14 laps down in 29th place. A bridge and Stratton on board camera as Jeff Gordon gets by David Green. There's Kevin LePage. He's got to negotiate around. And meanwhile, Terry Labonte is right there. But now Labonte catches the face to the floor and hurting him to a little bit. Two or three car links. Jarrett closes in now to within a second of Jeff Gordon. But now, unfortunately, Jarrett has to go through that same traffic that we saw Jeff Gordon get through. Exactly. And he lost three-tenths of a second on that lap by, by getting caught up in that traffic. Oh, and Gordon tangles with the, what's it, the 98 car? Greg Sachs. And they spun around. Let's see, the 98 spun around. Gordon's okay. He kept going. No caution. No caution yet. Now there is. Wow, caution flag now. Who's going to stop with 15 laps to go? Is anybody going to stop? I don't think so, Benny, unless it would be those guys at the tail end of the lead lap. They'd have nothing to lose. It's the 14th caution of the race, and it comes with 13 laps to go. Here's the replay. See, Jeff Gordon's coming up on Greg Sachs, clips him just a little bit, cut it a little bit too close, and Sachs spins around down to the inside of the racetrack. It took him a while to get going, and the caution was already out by then. Here it is again, coming up off turn two. 
see Sachs is down out of the way, but Gordon just just misjudged it just a little bit, similar to Dale Jarrett hitting Mike Skinner a little bit earlier today. So what does that do? Well, it closes up the interval once again as the caution waves. It is anybody's race here at Bristol with just a little more than 10 laps to go. We'll be back in a moment. Well, they, G, they, DJ got right behind them. Yep. To the 99 and the 33 coming in. Yep. Which is smart. They have nothing to lose. No, and it, it'll be a single foul. Restart with the leaders all, you know, up in front of everybody yeah. else. More than likely. Depends on how long this caution flag stays out. Yeah. There's Rusty coming back out. So his motor is not totally gone. He's down to 35th now because the 31, the 18, and the 97. Well, the 97, I guess, he may be able to beat the 97. Yeah. yeah. And the 18. If he beats one, he yeah. beats the other. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, we, pay attention. We to talk you. about that. That's exactly what we're talking about. For five minutes we talk. I understand yeah, that. It's very For honest. five minutes we talk about it. Well, not very good. Sometimes <laughs> you don't do that very good either. <laughs> Is this my water back here? Yeah. It's gotten warm again. Oh, well. Yes. Yes, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, then I'm, <laughs> then I'm going to take over your condo. Maybe one to go. Now let's see. There's 11 laps to go. When they hit the line, there will be 10 to go. So what does that mean? get the green flag and there will be 10 laps to go. Several cars at the tail end of the lead lap, namely uh, Schrader and ready, Jeff now. Burton, came in and got some fresh tires. So this is going to be interesting. Go, 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 go. All of them beat Dick Freckle down in that first turn. Jeff Gordon did. Terry Labonte, he got by him pretty good. Jerry wasn't held up too much, but Jeff Gordon got a big lead. Jeremy Mayfield there in fourth place clears Dick Trickle. Here comes Johnny Benson in fifth. And Presley is up high against the wall. Got the right front tires flat on the Jasper engine car. Top break for Presley. We see he's pancaked the right side of it. We're running 13th, one lap down. And Rusty Wallace is back out on the racetrack, for many laps down. Just trying to beat some of those cars that are out of race. Because he ran in on Dale Jerry. And now here comes Dick Trickle back. And also Mark Martin and Jeff Burton all able to get by Jeremy. And Jeff Burton is one of those drivers that made a pit stop, changed some tires. So Jeremy Mayfield losing positions plus pulling his fence. Almost. Right in front of a lot of cars. Oh, wow. no, 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 no. Don't know how everybody missed it. Let's see. The caution is not out wow. yet. He's no sitting yet. there. The is looking at it. He's sitting the wrong way. If he was sitting the other way, he might get going, but he's going to have a hard time. And caution that got in his hand. Is he going to throw it? Yet. Ooh. He's just trying to get back up on the road. Now he's got his car moving. They're going to stay under green. It looks like Jeremy is moving. Boy, what a costly situation that was for him. He has taken over the points lead. Here's a replay. Here he comes off the corner. That's Ted Musgrave. Underneath him. Oh, it's some contact between Musgrave and... Oh, he backs up in the fence. And Musgrave looked like he lost a spot to Schrader. Yes, he did. And you're right, guys. I don't know how in the world he stood down between those cars. Meanwhile, there are only three more laps to 
go. Make that two and a half laps to go. That incident put Rusty Wallace back in the points lead by one single marker. Wow. <laughs> Rusty is back on there. Look at him. 909 for Rusty and 908 for Mayfield. The points right now. And Jeff Gordon has a good comfortable lead with coming around to get the white flag. One more lap to go. He's coming up on traffic. But on Mayfield, and he's already cleared uh, Greg Sachs. And here's the battle for second place behind him. Going for four straight wins at the Boone City 500. Here is Jeff Gordon taking the checkered flag and winning his four straight. Terry Labonte second. Dale Jarrett is third. And with that four straight win in this race, he ties Darrell Walter, who won four straight in 81, 82, 83, and 84. Jeff Gordon wins here at Bristol in the Booth City 500. We'll be back to talk with him in just a moment. today. By Briggs and Stratton, put more power in your lineup. Make sure all your outdoor power equipment has a powerful Briggs and Stratton engine. Jeff Gordon takes a cold drink of water, winning the Food City 500 here at Bristol Woo! Motor Speedway. Yeah. Down to the McDonald's winner circle and Bill Weber. And Jeff Gordon gets the victory kiss from his wife, Brooke, a big hug. And congratulations, our first two-time winner of 1997, and you had to work for it today, young man. Oh, boy, I tell you, we sure did. Uh, man, what an awesome team. I tell you what, uh, they deserve all the credit for this one. Well, I thank God for certainly looking over me, uh, not only on the racetrack, but off the racetrack. We're very, very blessed, very fortunate. but. I tell you what, that pit crew, uh, we need to bust off a good pit stop and get out front, get some good track position, uh, and we did it. I, we tightened it up, and uh, I tell you what, that's what we need to get out front and get that car tightened up. Uh, pretty amazing day. There's a lot of guys running real strong out there, and I didn't know if I could hold off Terry. He was pretty strong. Crew Chief Ray Everham told me this morning, Jeff, there are a few tracks where you just have an excellent feel for the race car. This is one of them, and it looks like it paid off for you today. Well, it sure did. I don't know if it's, you know, just bringing me back to the short tracks or, you know, what it is. It's just 
I love this place, and uh, this place has been real good to me. And today, when you get a car that can run up front, you know, it makes it a whole lot easier. And uh, we qualified up front, so we got to pit up front, and uh, all we need was one good pit stop there at the end, and we got it. And uh, Terry, right behind you, perhaps trying to pull a Gordon there in the closing laps, couldn't quite do it. Hey, let me tell you, Terry's as aggressive as anybody when it comes to a win, and, uh, you know, Got to say hey to Rick. Uh, this is a good, great one-two finish for Hendrick uh, Motorsports, and uh, we're really proud and uh, proud to, to, to finish uh, one-two with Terry right there. And I tell you, had he got in front of me, I don't think I could have got him. But uh, I want to thank DuPont Automotive Fishes, Quaker State, and Pepsi for everything they do. The Chevrolet was in victory lane today. I'm pretty proud of it. The first short track win of 1998 goes to the 1997 Winston Cup champion, Jeff Gordon. It is his eighth short track victory of his career and the 31st overall win for Jeff Gordon. The unofficial results, results these yellow markers indicate those who led a lap. You'll see Rusty Wallace is having led the most laps in just a few minutes. Michael Waldrop, the last car on the lead lap in ninth. LaJoy has his best career finish. And Jeremy Mayfield will go back to 12th spot after that spin over in turn three. As we look at 16 to 30, Bobby Hamilton, Ernie Irvin, both led laps. Morgan Shepard will come on 24th today. And here are the remainder of the field, and you can see that double arrow there. That means that Rusty Wallace led the most laps, so he got 10 bonus points. And those bonus points have kept him in the points lead, but it's just one single marker over his teammate, Jeremy Mayfield. Jeff Gordon moved up one, Labonte up two, Elliott stayed in the fifth position, Earnhardt lost three. Martinsville is our next race coverage, Friday, April 17th, Bud Pole qualifying, a modified tour race on Saturday along with Happy Hour, then on Sunday at Martinsville, it'll be NASCAR today at 12.30 and the Goodies Headache Powder 500 at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Sunday, April the 19th. So another great event here at Bristol Motor Speedway saw Jeff Gordon take the checkered flag. Coming up next, NASCAR Shop Talk with Rusty Wallace, who is still the points leader in the 1998 season. Great run here today. We look forward to Martinsville in a couple of weeks. There will be Easter between uh, now and then, and so happy Easter to everybody. Jeff Gordon wins here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. For Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Bill Weber, and Ray Dunlap, I'm Bob Jenkins. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Hey, Weber, are you still on? Is Bill Weber still? Uh, I'm here. Good job. Go ahead. That? You need something, BP? Uh, you might check the two car, I think, by getting back on the racetrack, beat the 18 and 19, okay. the 18 and 97. I'll check. Uh, right. It might be just a tidbit and six more points okay. if he did. Are you, um, are you going directly? Are you leaving right away, BP? Yeah. Well, okay. Just wanted to check. I could stay if you need for me to. I don't want to make you stay, man. Thanks. Please feed that uh, video if you can. Thanks. All right. The next Monday, I'll be in uh, on vacation. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. okay. Stand by. You're watching the sixth race of the NASCAR 1998 Winston Cup season. It's the Food City 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. We now move ahead in our coverage of this event. Okay. Okay. 
You're watching highlighted coverage of the Food City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Our next Winston Cup coverage will be at Martinsville Friday, April 17th, Bud Pole qualifying, a modified race and happy hour on Saturday. Then on Sunday race day, it begins with NASCAR today at 12.30 and the Goodies Headache Powder 500 live at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Sunday, April the 19th. Back to Bristol after this. Thank you. See you guys.